Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. It is us, Dragon's Creed Gaming. You are joining us for episode... Uh, what is this? Number three. Yeah, episode three of our Merkbjör actual play series. Uh, as always, before we get started, be sure you uh, stop by the old Facebook uh, where we have all of our uh, latest news for the podcast and the shows. Check us out on YouTube. Uh, our latest episode of Tale of Four Gamers aired today. Already getting a couple uh, comments there. Uh, ben Kotchgomper, I believe, uh, said hello. So hope you're enjoying it, man. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Stop by uh, iTunes or um, Apple Podcasts. Uh, help give us some five-star reviews and grow that channel. And as always, if you want to help support the channel a little bit further, consider joining our Patreon, where you can toss a few coins into the Dragon's Horde and help us with a variety of things and get yourself access to some cool things, such as our Warhammer Monthly Patreon-only actual play series. Uh, we're actually going to be recording the final episode for that the end of this month and we're going to have a new adventure some more warhammer with lots of elves coming up uh, so check that out but uh, however you can help us however you can support us whatever it is you can do we thank you guys for it we appreciate whether it's a like a follow a subscription or a little bit of cash money dollars it's all helpful it all means a lot to us so thank you all for that uh, but let's just dive right in here. So let's hear from our players. Tell us who you are, who you're playing, and anything else exciting you'd like to tell the uh, the listeners. And then we can go from there. So, uh, Sean, you're the only one who's not muted, so why don't you go ahead and start us off? All right. Uh, I'm Sean, and I'm playing this session, until he dies, Rilk, the pale one. He's got 10 HP max, so I think he'll survive. <laughs> if we would do our best. Um, anything crazy? I recently started playing a, a cool like rhythm action game called Hi-Fi Rush, so I'm digging that. Lots of like guitar riffs and smashing buttons to kill enemies, so yeah. It reminds me of a... Uh, did you ever play Typing of the Dead? No. You know well, the game House of the Dead, right? Yeah. The, the light shooter? Yeah. Well, there's, there's a typing one for House That 2 called Typing of the Dead. And when the fucking zombies pop up, there'll be words you have to type, like that appear above their head, and that's <laughs> how you kill them. So it's meant to teach you how to type faster. Uh, and it's, it's fucking hilarious, man. It's awesome. That actually sounds pretty cool. I <laughs> yeah. Played, I played a version of that with demons, and it was called The Texter Cyst. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Incredible. Awesome. All right. Uh, well, Frog, you spoke up next, so let's have it. Yeah, this is the Frog. I'm playing Henry Old Crab Wright, who's uh, d perhaps cursed to die soon. Or maybe not that soon. We'll find out. Um, but otherwise, things are going well out here. I've uh, spent a nice evening hanging out with people on uh, the Union Terrace. Is like a student bar slash music venue overlooking the lake uh, outside here that has just great outdoor seating, cool place to hang out at. So yeah, here, okay, chilling there. It's a lovely evening. Sounds lovely. sounds nice indeed. Yeah. All right, and Kyle, what you been up to, man? Hello. Uh, it's Kyle. I fuck. Who am I playing? <laughs> uh, yeah, I know that. <laughs> uh, Pell or Pele or Pelly. I don't know. Pell. Let's go with Pell. Uh, Curse Skinwalker. And uh, what's up with me? I didn't have Typing of the Dead. I was the loser <laughs> who had Mavis Beacon teaches typing. What? Uh, and then Mario teaches typing. Oh. So that was the thing. Yeah. I had a pretty good uh, WP, what is it? Word per Word minute? Word per minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a pretty good one. <laughs> At a long time ago. Now I have to stare at the fucking thing. 
I can type. Yeah. I can type really fast. Just depends how accurate you want me to be. <laughs> oh yeah. Just mention your your fingers are too fat to use this phone. Yeah, it is. Boom! Look how fast I typed that. Damn. <laughs> All right, and uh, last but not least, Eric, all the way from Ye Old Texas. Good evening. Uh, yeah, I am playing Spiker, a uh, pale one tonight. Oh, yeah. He looks like he might hold up pretty well, uh, looking at his, some of his powers and equipment. So yeah. I've been fooled before, though, in this game. <laughs> That's very true. Um, <laughs> Nothing too exciting out here. Um, I've been working on one of my tech certificates, trying to get it renewed for the next three years, so it's kind of been a pain in my butt. I just had to renew my funeral director's license last month. Mm. Gotta do that every two years. Fun stuff, okay. let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. But. But anywho, uh, I am the Great Unclean One, your host and GM, and what have I been up to? Well, we are just about done with those fucking Chaos Knights for uh, Tale of Four Gamers. They just have to have the snow put on their bases, and they are done. They're finally pinned and glued to the bases. I finished painting them this week. They've been uh, seal-coated with some Storm Shield and some uh, matte varnish, so... We are about to call them finished, and the Chaos Hounds are right around the corner too, so good progress there. Still crushing some face in Total War 3, playing some Skaven Clan Molder as Throp the Unclean, and what else? Um, almost towards the end of Season 2 of Walking Dead, um, they j I just did the episode where they picked up Randall, uh, and yeah, man, still just so nostalgically good love that shit <laughs> we need more Shane more Shane he's a, he's a yeah, it's great addition love him yeah yeah but I remember now like you know why people hated Lori so much she fucking sucks man she's <laughs> fucking yeah. awful she's fucking grime a worm tonguing in Rick's ear all of um, season yeah, two please. and then every time he does what she says she complains about it Bro, right? I was not sad when, like, spoilers, it's been out for like 10 years. She dies. Not sad at all. Yeah, it was like, dude, like, and then at the end of season two, when he tells her, like, I killed Shane, she looks at him like he's got three heads or like he's a serial killer. It's like, bitch, six episodes ago, you were telling him, you were egging him on to go kill Shane to protect his family. You fucking right. backstabber. Ugh. Can't win. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, I have nothing against the actress that played Lori. She did a fine job, and I've seen her yeah, other yeah. stuff. But, yeah, I don't understand why they did that. Same thing with like Andrea, man. Real bit. Yeah, they I'll, made yeah. Andrea so annoying. Like, And Lori Holden's a great actress, man. She she was in the Silent Hill movie. I don't know if you knew that. First, <laughs> she, nope. she, play, she plays the, the cop, Sybil. Oh, nice. Yeah, she crushes that, too. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know why they... I know she gets really bad in season three, but yeah. she's still kind of annoying, so... Anywho, yeah, love it. Good stuff. Anyway, here we are. We're back in the dying world. Alas, we left. You guys had gone through the Goblin Grinder after discovering the goblins were coming from Nagel Green's mill. Now I'm going to switch over to my sweet map of Craven Ford here. Look at all these guys. Let's get rid of some of these tokens. You killed the big-ass goblin. Um... You, uh, you found Nagel and his, uh, like, henchwoman gravedigger, Quarg. Uh, she, you ended up, I think, killing her as well. And Henry, saving the day as one after another, his companions fell on their ascent to the top of the, the mill. And then on the escape out, uh, it was only Henry as his last teammate fell to the goblin horde. And Henry managed to hold his own for like a turn or two against like half a dozen goblins and uh, the bastard, the big goblin. And finally, reinforcements arrived in the form of a couple new characters, including the greatest hero the world has ever known, Gildenkrantz, the Fang Deserter, with one HP, 
bravely <laughs> charging into battle and distracting the enemies so Henry could, I think, fail to cast his spell. Um, but it was epic nonetheless, and then he played his flute, and that killed a few goblins. Uh, and then another hero showed up after Gildenkrantz got aced. So, all in all, it was a fantastic session. We're up to eight dead guards out of 50, and two dead dogs. So the bodies are starting to pile up. We're about a fi almost a fifth of the way through the entire pool of characters. Uh, but you guys survived. Henry has now made it through two missions. So I'm imagining at this point that his power creep is probably undeniably awesome and he's unkillable. So we'll see about that. And then, uh, yeah, you discovered the goblin grinding machine at the top of the mill. Uh, you took out Nagel and Quarg and you have saved the day. Uh, unfortunately, Henry, you have been cursed with the goblin curse after being uh, wounded multiple times by goblins. So you do have plenty of Nagel's cure, but you have learned that the cure is not permanent. It only forestalls the curse from happening by a couple days. Uh, so... And there's, of course, there's plenty of people in the town that are afflicted by the curse as well that you need to decide how you're going to handle all of that. So I think that's where we will pick it up as you guys have saved the day, uh, gotten some much needed rest the following evening. And uh, the next day, uh, the quote unquote sun rises, which means... Dun, 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 dun. I need someone to roll me a misery die. D4, please. I'll throw one out for the, the team. A two. We're right. safe for another day. Safe for another day, that's right. All right, great. Well, uh, there you guys are. It is the next morning. Uh, you are having your typical gruel at, uh, at the start of the day and you're in the barracks. What would you guys like to do? Switch over some music here while you guys decide what it's going to be. Ooh, four omens back, and I got three HP back. Very nice. Four omens? Yeah, I get D4 omens every rest. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> yeah, let's see how we can use them, yep. Yeah, Henry got four HP back, two omens. Some, some powers. Oh. Nice. Wow. Damn, pale. Oh. pale. Look at that. That's pretty great. What's my power? Do I have a power? Are power? you you a cursed skinwalker, you said? Yes. You're just your oh, power so... is turning into the, the raven, I thought, right? Gotcha. Okay, so that's like each time going back and forth. Got it. That's why I had so I had such few uh, left before I rested. Probably, yeah. Oh, man. I forgot. I have a... So in my human form, I have a peg leg. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> and I can use it as a club. Oh, no. <laughs> Incredible. I'll just get some gruel. Go about all the other guards, see if any of them are uh, sick. I feel awful. <laughs> oh, that's one. Yeah, I feel pretty great. You know, winning that fight and all. I am well <laughs> rested and I feel good about the day, surprisingly. Well, perhaps your optimism will carry us all through. Fingers crossed. Unless that is against our religion, in which case I don't do that. Uh, no, I don't think there's anything about that with your oh, okay, worship regard. of the Becklure. Yeah, okay, great. Or there's some Becklure sign I can do with my fingers? Probably, yeah. Yeah, do that, right. Uh, speaking of the Becklure, um, one of the things that you hear amongst your fellow guards is that there will be a sermon uh, this evening that the... Uh, the deacon has called at the uh, at the rotting oak. So, 
you have time if you guys want to do anything else during the day. Uh, but that is what will be the main event for the evening. Let's see. Um, no, I think we're good. You know, just chill. Avoid anything that might kill me, like walking and opening doors and... <laughs> Living life. <laughs> <laughs> Living in the Existing. dark world. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Does anybody else want to do anything, or should we just move along to the uh, the evening sermon? Yeah. Um, I guess I would check in with the the deaconess if if they they wish to grant <laughs> me an audience to return the sword ahead of time. Um, since our her initial stipulation was for the next mission and I don't want to make any assumptions about whether or not that's going to come call in, in the near future or whatever. Plus you I'd are, like to ask about goblin cares or whatever from someone. You are unable to get an audience with her before the sermon this evening. That's fine. All right. Well, it, it'll come up later then, I imagine. Or we'll just hang on to it. All right. Uh, uh, Kyle, Eric, anything you guys need to do? I don't think so. Uh, no, I think uh, Kyle would just be going with the flow. All right. Well, most of the day goes by rather uneventfully. Uh, it's quiet. Um, and, oh, you know what? Let's, uh, yeah, it's quiet. Not a whole lot going on. People are kind of, uh, you know, getting themselves back together after the shock of learning what happened in the, uh, the mill. There's a lot of rumors going through town. And eventually, once again, as night begins to fall, everybody in the town, it seems, seems to crowd into the rotting oak. And you guys once again find yourself in the temple of the Beklur as uh, everyone gets their places in the pews and the seats. And eventually uh, the uh, the deacon emerges and she takes her place behind the um, behind the altar. And uh, you four are up kind of off to the side again as uh, as usual along with uh, Captain Graft and once she emerges everything gets really quiet really the only sound you can hear is the wind and the uh, the fluttering of some candles and torches nearby and when she takes her place behind the altar she raises both of her hands uh, to her side, she says, My children, let us give thanks to the Beklur, for he has delivered us from outright disaster. Through his champion, we have been saved. Everybody begins to do the usual prayers and hymns as she begins to lead a, a sermon about redemption and salvation and uh she touches a bit on the goblin cure or the goblin uh, grinder and the curse that has afflicted the town and towards the end of this sermon she says while we have been spared there are some some who and she stops for a moment, and you can't tell if she's searching for the right words or leaving things for dramatic effect, but then she continues. There are some who the Beklur has chosen not to save. There's a murmur that comes through the crowd. And at this point, you guys notice that there's quite a few other of the, uh, the guards here uh, that have kind of... I guess for lack of a better term, encircled the, uh, uh, you know, the outside. They've kind of made a circle around uh, the perimeter of the, uh, the inside of the rotting oak. She says, 
there are individuals here who cannot be saved, will not be saved, and so they must go to join the Becklure in eternity. You see a lot of muttering in the crowd, a lot of frightened looking faces as most of the uh, the guard that are here begin to start to enter the crowd and grab individuals that you can tell by the at least a lot of them the way they look that they're probably afflicted by the curse and they are forcibly dragged uh, away from their families and the rest of the crowd and she says now we will see them to their final place alongside the Becklure. And through his love, they will find salvation. And she leads a procession out of the rotting oak. She beckons for the four of you to kind of follow her almost as like a, an honor guard, you feel, along with Captain Graft. And the group of you lead this procession, the guards kind of forcing the uh, afflicted into a group and the rest of the town meekly following behind until you guys make your way out to the Crystal Depths. Once again, you find yourself on the outside of the town by that clear pool and one by one, the people that are afflicted with the curse are brought towards the pool and some guards hold them in place while other guards uh, begin to bring forward the uh, the weights that you use, the rocks and chains to weigh them down. And she they bring the first one forward. It's a man who's struggling in his... Uh, probably middle years, 30s or 40s. And the Beck Lure turns to you, Henry, and she says, you must assist this man for his transcendence. And she beckons to the, the chains and the shackles that are laying on the ground in front of you all. So is she just asking Henry to do it, or is this like a you four need to help? It looks like she's right now. She's specifically asking Henry. Okay. Uh, sure. I'll uh, throw some shackles on this guy. He begins pleading for his life, uh, asking for your your help. You know, and he he tries everything. He he begs to the deacon. Then he begs to you as the, the chosen one or the hero. Uh, he begins to beg to everyone around him. And then he begins, when that doesn't work, he begins to get angry and shout insults, saying how everyone here is crazy and damn the Beck lure and things like that. And it doesn't go on for very long before the deacon nods her head and uh, indicates for you to throw the first of the the chain stones into the pool, Henry. Do you do so? Uh, yeah. Henry will quietly and sadly just kick, kick it into the pool. There's a loud splash. You can hear the rattle of the chain as it quickly goes taut. The man screams as he's dragged to the ground and then dragged over the edge of the pool into the clear water and his screams stop. And this goes on for several long agonizing minutes as one by one the individuals in the town who are supposedly afflicted by the curse are similarly chained and thrown into the pits. After the first one, the deacon does seem to make it a point to have each of the four of you at least do this once. And then it looks like you stand by her side while 
the rest are taken care of by the guards and Captain Graft. When the last one is finally plunked into the water, she raises her hands up once again. Let us give thanks for the mercy the Becklure has had upon our remaining flock. For we are truly his chosen children, the ones that he looks out for, the ones that he watches over, the ones he loves the most. And at that, she turns and begins to lead the procession back to the oak. And when everyone is assembled, uh, rather than coming inside, she stops outside the doors with everybody out in front of the oak. She says, go now, my children, children of the Becklure. Sleep another night to know that you are favored. And they all bow their heads say their farewells and the group of cr crowd of the pit people and eventually the guards begins to uh, dissipate. Eventually uh, you see Captain Graff, uh, she, she looks to him and she nods and he looks kind of over the four of you. You can't really tell what he's thinking, but he, his eyes linger on the four of you for a moment and then uh, he leaves leaving the group of you with the deacon. Come now, my children. She motions for you to follow her back into the temple. Yeah. yeah. When you're back inside, she once again has the four of you kind of form a half semicircle around the front of the altar, and she gets back to her usual place behind it. And uh, she beckons for Henry to step forward. I step forward and I guess with the the chaos blade kind of presented to her. She walks back around and she looks down at the blade that you're, you know, holding in front of her. She puts her hand kind of, uh, you know, where the, the hilt and the pommel meet and she runs her hand along the blade towards the tip of it. And you swear that you can all see like a weird glimmer when she does that. That doesn't seem natural. She says, Our champion Henry, twice now you have thwarted death. Twice now you have been the savior of Craven Ford. For that, I think the Beck Lure would wish for you to keep this blade. Wield it proudly in the name of our town, in the name of the Becklure. Slay those that would bring harm to us. Traitors such as the Green family. Will you do this? Of course. Thank you, my lady. I will wield it with pride. She gives you a solemn nod and then uh, she looks over the rest of you you have a strong leader here emerging take care to learn from him see what he has to teach and perhaps the three of you can stand alongside him for more than a fortnight like all the others Go now and rest, champion. I feel that the Becklure will have need of your services soon enough. And at that, she seems to kind of stop and um, kind of like lowers her head as if she's uh, waiting for the four of you to leave. Yeah. Don't say anything, just leave. Oh, yeah. Out we go. <laughs> yep. Bow. Yeah. Yep. I'll... Yeah. Super bow. I'll... <laughs> bow out and wait until I'm just out of earshot and say to that end uh, do any of you folks have any armor and we should pick up more if not uh, I'm going to put my shield behind my back and be like <laughs> what armor oh yeah I forgot you're you're one of them so you're yeah. naked right now aren't you no I'm, I'm light armor shield 
Oh, okay. <laughs> He's just hiding it. King. But yeah, I I, uh, I have armor when I'm a raven, but I don't have armor as a human, so. I own armor. I'm not I'm not wearing it to church, but I own armor. Yeah. Like like, do you have bird armor? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like a little like little bird helm. Kind of, yeah. Like I get I guess uh, I'm sort of scaly as well because I have like a I have a bony scalp. Ew. Weird flex. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey man. I'm just telling you what's on the piece of paper. <laughs> and uh, might I add, I I don't you know, they can't see this or well it, they might, but uh uh Pell, my avatar is a wolf. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> and I'm a raven. Hell yeah. So mixed messages here. Crisis Kyle, the conscious on. here. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> it's just what it's just what the system rolled me. I didn't choose it. That's the that's the character art they have in the rule book. I think for the Skinwalker is the wolf. So yeah, that's yeah, probably cool. what they sure. Use. And it is a it is a sick uh, illustration, also. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, oh, yeah. um, so are you guys are you guys gonna go do some quick shopping then? That's what it sounds like. To get some equipment or yeah i would say so <laughs> do you want to go shopping i mean i uh don't need that much myself unless uh, i don't know could i if he has like serious armor <laughs> in the shop let's well let's Let check in wait. and see if, if you, the old boy i mean whatever whatever you guys need you can get you know it's in the in the uh yeah. the thing the folder so um, i'll be like yeah i want something a little bigger than a knife you know what are you, <laughs> what are you looking for lord henry i my coffers are at your beck and call <laughs> all right wait, so... wait so mine are at your beck and call you know <laughs> too also and i probably have more ah, i doubt that based on your grimy look <laughs> he hobbles away <laughs> Thank you, thank you, no, but uh, no. I think I, I'm well equipped. I just need to look out for you. You knew, folks. You really saved eyes. my life. Uh, and I'd like to be able to save one of yours. You've already done more than you can know. Run down. This is going to become the let's keep Matt alive till the end of the campaign game. Yeah, yeah. the suck up to the powerful boss campaign. We're going to we're going to change this to blight from blighted bulk orc to uh, the adventures of Henry and his oh, 49, yeah. 49 guard buddies. It's 49 meat shields. Henry Borg. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Oh, that'd be another great title. <laughs> The final, the final episode, Henry Borg. <laughs> All right, so um, the the forge is probably closed at this point because that takes place at evening. But the following day, you guys can uh, do some equipment, and um, then we can kind of do a little bit of a, a time hop here. So why don't you guys do that stuff first? Also, keep in mind somebody did get there was an artifact you guys found in Nagel's treasure chest i believe oh, yeah. eric has it the lamp of zen yeah the, uh, the magic lamp it looks like a genie's lamp basically for you know and it does the yes the spooky tendrils mm -hmm. yeah you can uh basically get uh, tendrils to go through your nose and uh maybe Ooh. buff your stats or permanently or... destroy them hmm. roll a d14 sense. presence test successfully wait Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Dude, so that, that you can see the lamp, and then you can see all the tendrils coming out. Yeah, Ooh. on a success, the brain struggles and breaks. Minus one presence. Otherwise, the tentacles take root without resistance. Plus yeah, one see, presence. You wanna you wanna fail this test, you get a bonus to your presence. <laughs> I just wanna let it take over. <clears throat> yeah. So. 
If anybody wishes to rub the lamp, they can. Hey, I mean, rub it, yo, lamp. Give it the old sick rub. Yeah, real cool, rub it. <laughs> okay, give me a presence test. Watch me, your old fucking hand. Oh, dr DR14. Oh, yes, a fail. All right, so you guys see he can rubs you? the lamp. These <laughs> nasty, inky black tendrils start to smoke out. They curl around his head and then start to make their way into his nostrils, his ears, his mouth. And uh, you see, like, his eyes roll back. You, feel, you think you can see, like, the tendrils kind of going over the whites of his eyes, too. And then they eventually stop coming out of the lamp. The last bit goes into his mouth. And you feel incredible. <laughs> and your presence goes up by one. Let's see if I can just edit Permanently. that. Nice. So just now it's a plus one, or because I don't know what the score is. What's your score currently? It was at plus zero. So now it'd be plus one. Yeah. Plus one. Okay. Damn. Oh man. Um, and it is a new day, so somebody please roll me that misery die. Switch the music here back to our. I went last time, so someone else give us that roll. What is it? D4? D4. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Here we go. Ooh. Fuck. Now, I roll a random power every day. It's a pale one, I guess. Yeah, go for it. Uh, so is that just the unclean scrolls? One, I two, three, four, oh, yeah. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, it's D10. Two. I guess one. if you want, Sean, you can roll, you can, you know, you can do a, do a 50-50 to see if it's an unclean scroll or a sacred scroll and then roll, because there's, I think there's 10 of each, two, four, six, so yeah, there's 10 of each if you want to do it that way. Okay, uh, so. D2 first. Yeah, high whatever, D3, high, low, whatever. I will be sacred for me. So it's unclean, and it was All a right. two. Death. Ooh, so oh, clean. okay. All right, Eric, roll d10. False Dawn Knight's Chariot. Oh. Light oh. or pitch black for 3d10 minutes. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> so it's it's a light and a darkness spell all in one. All right. <laughs> Very That's nice. Cool. Right. So then my last one was the palms open. Yeah, so that goes away then. Okay, uh, if there's any equipment you guys want to buy, go ahead and do so. No okay. need to, to waste too much time doing that. Yeah, I'm just going to get some miscellaneous stuff, like a backpack and a, a rope and a grappling hook. Okay. I don't know if we're going to be climbing, but I've never become heard, superstitious right? about it. I am uh, gonna do math. <laughs> little math hammer. I everything I do. Excellent. So, I'm so bad at it. That's why I went to art school. <laughs> All right. Um, well, while you guys are doing that, uh, it is a few more days before anything really noteworthy happens. Uh, there's a uh, a quiet that comes over the town after the purging of those afflicted by the uh, the goblin cure. Now, Henry, you're not sure if the deacon doesn't realize you have the cure, or if you've been spared because you're the champion, or for other sinister reasons. Um, but you are still afflicted by the curse. So, if you do not keep taking Nagel's cure, or if that eventually runs out, um, unless you find another way to lift the curse, uh, you will eventually turn into a goblin. So, uh, the cure lasts for, check my notes here, each dose of the cure lasts for d6 days. So, why don't you go ahead and roll d6 now to see how long this batch is going to last for, um, there's quite a bit of it still left, assuming you keep it all for yourself. Uh, but that's up to you. I mean, we'll we'll see what what comes up, I suppose. Okay. Uh, 
One, two, three, go. It's a five. All right. So, yeah, just uh, keep track of that and then take them as need be. I would say he's probably got like a full, he's probably got his like latest batch ready to go. So he probably got at least like a, a box worth, a small crate. So not in, not in danger of running out anytime soon, what I'm saying. Nice. But it might. Anyway, so you um, you have your, your cure for now and uh, you know, a couple, couple more days go by before anything really eventful happens. Um, as a matter of fact, let's see, we're going to say five days go by. So why don't we roll 5d4? Uh, if we get more than one misery, we're going to do one misery in batches like this. Uh, so if I okay. get more than one, we'll just do one. And there it is. There's the one. Okay. Love this game. Okay. Uh, would somebody please roll me a... Roll me 2d6. D66 style. Okay, what'd you get? I got a... 2 and a 5. 25. And glass shall become quartz. Hmm. Okay. Well, the next... Actually, it's the next night, basically, because it's the, the first day after the, uh, the sermon at the temple. Another one of these black salt storms sweeps across the town. Uh, as it does... All of the glass in Craven Ford, primarily windows, things like that, pretty much overnight turned to quartz. Not really a necessarily a terrible thing, but a very peculiar thing that many people, including your your uh, preacher doomsayer friend in town, uh, points to as being another sign of the end. Would somebody please roll me a d4 to see how strong the black salt is this time? Okay, a weak, vile gust. So everyone needs to make a dr8 toughness test. If you fail, I need you to roll me a d12. I'm going to reroll that. All right. 15. 19 oh. after using an omen. A ten. Oh boy. Henry. Oh, boy. oh no, everybody passed. Okay, just barely. So none of you are affected by the black salt. However, at this point is when our previous companion, Torben, finally succumbs to his black lung rot from the black salt. And we are going to add him to the dead list. Uh, buddy. Oof. Uh, however, his horse is still alive. <laughs> it's talking douchebag horse. Yep. Yep. So. Well, rest in peace, Torben. Anyway, about five days later, uh, after the black salt has torn across the plateau... Um, let's see here. I'm gonna roll a dice here, and it's gonna be... Spiker! You are approached by a woman who appears to be quite distraught. She introduces herself. This is while you're on patrol one day. She introduces herself by the name of Borda. She says, please, sir, uh, sir guard, can, can you help me? Calm down. What is it? It's, it's my boy, my boy Thurg. He's been, he's been taken. He's been kidnapped by th that maniac cannibal. Please. Where? She, uh, 
she looks kind of back and forth, almost as if she's nervous to say anything. And she says, like with a low whisper, she says, the accursed den. Uh, and if you want to give me a presence test to see if you've heard of that before. You have indeed. The cursed den is a dungeon slash prison that you, uh, or lair that you've heard about that is uh, somewhere to the east of Craven Ford in the, the hills past the woods. It is rumored there is a cannibal warlock there by the name of Fletcher, and he supposedly has uh, a few of his lackeys who steal people away in the night drag them there to become their next meal. This woman claims that her son has been taken by Fletcher's men. When was he taken? Uh, we realized it uh, uh, earlier this morning. He, he, he didn't come back, and uh, when we went to find him, we found we found Fletcher's sigil and you you know that uh, part of the legend, part of the story is that when they take somebody, uh, for lack of a better term, they leave like a calling card behind. Uh, it's like his his sigil uh, looks like it's branded into a, a stone, like a flat a flat type of stone, and they they brand it with his mark. All right. I'll bring it up to the guard. We'll see what we can do. Just please save my boy. We're on it, ma'am. All right. Well, Spiker, what do you do? Uh, I guess I go back to post and see if I can get a group to go to the den. Uh, well, you I mean you've got your regular group, the four of you kind of, you know, work in pairs when you're on patrol or, you know, you guys are bunked together in the same part of the barracks. So you've kind of been like assigned to work with Henry. He's kind of like your sergeant at this point, I guess, is the, the best way okay. to look at it. Then I'd go to Henry first. If right, we're not yeah. paired together on patrol. Yeah, you find him. Henry, a boy was taken by Fletcher and his men. A mother is very distraught and would like us to send a party to retrieve him. Fletcher? The rumored cannibal? That's the one. D did she have any idea where they were or where the boy was His, taken? To his den, what she claims. Yeah, any of you, the rest of you, can make that presence test as well. If you pass, you've heard something about this. If not, you've never <laughs> heard the legend. Big ol' three. Nothing. Uh, 14? Plus five, Henry. Also 14. <laughs> he is the chosen one, after all. <laughs> oh, wow. That each time. I, also, I also like that his token is the only one in color. <laughs> <laughs> you have to survive a mission or two, and then you get the cool color tokens. <laughs> it's an unlock for your profile pick. <laughs> yeah, battle pass unlocked. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Henry and, and Pell, uh, you have each heard rumors as well. Um, one that he's like a, a warlock of some power. Uh, the other that he has a, a domain where him and a group of cannibals lurk. You don't know anything else beyond that. Um, so it's up to you how you want to proceed. Is that within our domain to take care of? I suppose so. A few others that uh, on my band are uh, directed to leave the town on these sorts of missions. I suppose let's get the rest of the group and see if there are any objections. I'd suggest making this quick the cannibals don't leave them alive very long 
No, I suppose that, that would be sort of counterproductive <laughs> to their whole. And he, he makes some hand gestures and, like, uh, turns up his face and starts marching off to the rest of the group. <laughs> yeah, you get everybody back together. At this point, if you guys haven't fully healed, uh, you guys can do so. Just reset your HP. You don't need to reroll your powers. Uh, for those of you that have, like, daily powers or something, we'll just keep whatever you rolled uh, at the start rather than rerolling for no reason. Um, Since it's been five days. Yeah. Do the omens then reset again? No, just just keep okay. just yeah. keep what you had. We'll just it's kind of the start of the session, so yeah. Um, just leave it that way. So, uh, yeah, you gather everybody together. You guys have already done some gear acquiring. So, is there anything else you want to do before you leave? The other gear information you want to try to get. Uh, I think Pell would be pretty good. Be ready to rock. Okay. Well, in that case, I am going to need a couple rolls here. Did I add this one to the game yet? So let's see. Ch -ch -ch. Uh, Hmm. All right, I need somebody to roll me a D8, please. Oh, also, Henry's going to drink more Goblin Care before he leaves. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Please, what would you get? Three more days. All right. Okay, D8? Yes, please. There it is. A two. A two. All right, so the path that the group of you end up having to take is um, a narrow wagon track that is used primarily by farmers. So rather than the old trade road that was once well-maintained and has since fallen in disrepair, you find yourselves heading pretty much in the opposite direction uh, from the, the first dungeon you guys went to, making your way through the woods and then towards uh, the hills where Fletcher's lair, the accursed den, is supposedly located. Uh, I'm also looking for the weather table, which I realize I don't think I put in Foundry yet, so I get out the old rule book. And would somebody roll me a d12, please? Yeah, I got it. piercing wind sweeps over you guys rustling through the trees and really just kind of biting through your clothes making you quite cold and shivering as you make your way through this desolate part of the forest finally would somebody roll me a d20 do a 17 all right well, we've already had that that would be the troll ambushing you again <laughs> but we'll let old Henry rocket. take care of it now that troll is dead so we will uh we'll go for something else here uh roll me a d6 please kyle okay three okay let me see what we got okay uh, about halfway through your journey, you are making your way down the road, and up ahead, you can see what looks like a group of, uh, a group of dogs, or perhaps, uh, hounds of some sort. They're kind of mangy looking. They look like they're probably fairly hungry. They definitely look like they are um, uh, strays. You know, they're not... Uh, you doubt they belong to anybody all the way out here. 
And there are five of them. You can see that they're sniffing around the edge of the road where the forest meets the road. Looks like they're coming out of the woods. And you guys are maybe 50 yards away when you spot them. And then you can see that they uh, they kind of stop. They raise their heads and they sniff. And these dogs are pretty much black in color, maybe very dark gray. And they've got these strange, almost yellow glowing eyes. And you can see that all five of them uh, are foaming at the mouth to some degree. And it seems that they spot you and or smell you. And they come charging in your direction. Would everybody please... Uh, oh wait, we don't do initiative that way. Somebody roll me d4? Uh, four up, you guys go. Or d6 for four up? Yeah, that's what I meant. The players begin. All right. What knows? Okay, players. You know what that means. <laughs> Crank the fucking metal. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, this pack of dogs is making their way towards you. But you guys have... You guys got your head on a swivel. And you are prepared. What would you like to do? I'm going to turn to Henry and be like... I bet I can kill more than you. <laughs> Good. The boss, the boss is the best. And I guess charge one of the dogs. <laughs> All right. They are DR12. Okay, Spiker, you charge in. You crack one of these things uh, in the head with your staff, and it just collapses to the ground with a yelp, and it seems to stop moving. It doesn't seem to stop the other four, though, who seem uh, rather frenzied by the scent of blood and potential uh, meal here. Who's next? Well, there wasn't a goblin dying, so I'm not quite used to the sound, but if <laughs> if it, I believe it's dead, I'm going to play the flute of Tosk. <laughs> okay. Play that flute. Yeah, it works. That works. Or it deals dead, so... damage to a, a random enemy. All right. You play the flute, and another one of the dogs starts to yelp in pain, uh, kind of like it's it's hearing a dog whistle. And then it uh, you see it's like starts to like bleed from the eyes and the ears, and then it just keels over dead. Uh, I guess I will real cool attack a dog as well with a vicious battle axe. It's not really vicious; it's just a battle axe. Damn. Uh. Okay. What is this nonsense? Oh, they have armor. Oh, they, do they have armor? No, they do not. Okay, then five damage. Oh, yeah, you cut that dog down like it's nothing. Nothing. Well done. D8 damage. Wow. <laughs> okay, that leaves uh, Pell. What are you going to do? Oh, yeah. Pell, Pell bought himself a battle axe. So <laughs> he's just going to start twirling it and go, yeah, my turn. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> and, uh, sorry, what was their what was their attack? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Haba. Wow. All right. <laughs> oh. Feels Way bad. less yeah. impressive. You strike the dog just barely, and the two remaining they seem to have no fear in their eyes. Uh, as the frenzy has definitely overtaken them. And one of them is definitely going to attack you, Kyle. Uh, so they, they're DR12, they do D4 damage. And the other one is going to attack Spiker. Okay. Oh, dodge. Just by the nick of your teeth. The D4 damage? Yep. <laughs> No, oh, you guys are fine. All right, you may counterattack. Swing Ouch. and a miss. Uh, all right, uh, real cool. Once again, they don't have armor, though. I'll delete that this time. Another five. All right, Rilk dispatches a fourth one, leaving one remaining. Oh, Pell's going to rush it. 
That's a nope. fucking shame, man. Uh, <laughs> he's gonna. Uh, damn it. Yeah, I'll uh, open that. Uh, okay. I got one. You should. Okay. How about that's? Oh my god! <laughs> I did one better. Instead of a two, oh, I got a no. three. Worth it. All Sweet. Right. Henry's also gonna swing at this guy. Uh, Hell falls on his ass. Got a hit. Oh, oh, Henry with the chaos oh. blade. You chop this Ooh. thing in half. Uh, front and back half falling into two pieces, leaving nothing. And just like that, the swarm of angry, hungry strays are no more. It is not too long later that you guys find yourselves at the entrance to the accursed den. The very very simple, but kind of well hidden in the hills. You do eventually find, as the sun begins to set, you do find it's basically like a, a staircase that's um, more or less like in the ground. Uh, it's kind of hidden by some shrubbery and fallen trees and things like that, but uh, easy enough to find once you start looking. And it appears this is it. Okay, I'm changing us to a new map here. Do you guys see anything? No. Good. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm trying something different with uh, Fog of War here. So, okay, Ooh. there's a single staircase that leads down. You believe this is the place? Well, boss, what's the plan? I say we uh, go in there and cut some cannibals up. I don't know. Are any of you. Um, cannibals? Know, sneaky sword. <laughs> Are any of you cannibals? No. Good, good. <laughs> now that we've gotten that out of the way. Unless you want us to be. <laughs> right, unless that's part of the deal here. I unless, mean, yeah, we're here for you. <laughs> Whatever the boss says, you know? Yeah. Back Look, if you think <laughs> if you we think you just walk in there and be like, well, hello, fellow cannibals. <laughs> Which way to the, the tasty child <laughs> how do you do fellow cannibals hello fellow kids <laughs> <laughs> is uh, uh is the entrance or anything like lit can we see uh i do have a lantern if we you notice. you you can tell it looks like somewhere towards the bottom of these steps perhaps deeper into the room that they lead to there does appear to be a faint glimmer of some sort of flame. Okay. Ooh, nice. Uh, if you'd like to give me a presence test as well. This is what I excel at. Natural oh, yeah. <laughs> one. Okay. 13. Okay, for everybody except Rilk, who apparently has gone deaf in the process, um, <laughs> you guys can hear the sound of running water. It's faint, but you can hear it. I guess uh, we should try to s sneak in quietly. Good. Okay, boss. All right, let's see those quieter tests. This is uh, <laughs> the man. one that I threw a brick on. All right. I'm going to re-roll with some omen. Yeah, it's not but bad. There oh, we go. That's awesome. Okay, if, if you're so re-rolling, I think... What? Bell got a 16. What do you see usually? Are we 12. saying 12 for this? Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Well done. The group of you begin to creep down. What is the marching order? I don't know who's the sneakiest. Definitely not Rilk. It definitely looks like it, this staircase is only wide enough for one person to go down at a time. I'm the sneakiest, I think. Yeah. Oh, I'll sure. go. Uh, Pell will go second. I guess who's I'll... first? Spiker. Okay. The third? Spiker. Uh, Rilk Pell. will take up the rear. Henry, Henry. Uh, Rilk. Okay. Let me know if you need me to turn off the lights. 
Oh, hold on, I don't think it's working. Oh. Okay. Do you guys see like a room in front of you? Yes. Yeah, a little bit. Kind of narrow spot. Yeah, that Rick, yes. Rook, I think yours is messed up. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. hold on. I got to get the vision. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Still can't see anything. Why is it? Hold on. Let me give you a new token. There you go. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now I can see. All right. Um, so. Just make sure everyone's lighting is the same. Okay. Yeah, you guys can uh, can see ahead of you real quick. Let me just fix yours really quick here. Okay. So you begin to make your way down this staircase. And as you do, uh, Spiker, you eventually can see there is a room that stretches out in front of you. And you can see that a um, running across the room, this black line you see, that is a stream of water. You can see hanging from the ceiling are several small little oil lanterns that are giving off just a faint bit of light. Enough to be able to see the floor and you know barely see the outline of the walls. It's not a very big room, but uh, I guess I don't know how Morkborg actually does their distances here, so... Not sure what these squares. I think these squares are supposed to be ten feet each, five feet each, probably. So, uh, yeah. Let's see what it says. So, uh, that is what you see as you emerge. Also, you can hear and then see the flapping of little black, violet-colored butterflies that are mostly bouncing off the outside of the oil lanterns, you know, obviously trying to get at the light and just bouncing off the glass. Slowly creep forward, I guess. Okay, yeah, go ahead. So eventually you can see that there are two doors on the north wall of this room. Uh, one on the left and one on the right. The stream is uh, wide towards the center, but towards the edges where it meets the wall and it, it goes into the rank out of view. It's small enough, or it's it's narrow enough where you can hop over it. it doesn't look like anything out of the ordinary, regular stream. So it's also, like a, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say, so it's like a normal color. Doesn't give off a weird smell or anything. No, no. Okay. Uh, as you make your way north, you can all hear the faint sound, most peculiar sound, of a violin or two being played. Ah, they're connoisseur cannibals. Okay. <laughs> Just well, keep following along. Which door yeah. should we take? Sneak around and get close to Spiker here from the side. Yeah, you don't actually have to cross the Beep. thing in any special way, but if you don't want to have to make a test. Uh, can we put our ears up to like the door and see if we can hear anything on the other side? Or is there like a keyhole we can look through? Give me a presence test, please. Plus one. Net 20. All right. You definitely can hear there are two violins that are playing. Um, there is no keyhole to look through, uh, but you strain your hearing and there is nothing else that you hear other than perhaps the flicker of torches on the other side of these doors. But you don't hear, like, the sounds of anything moving around or voices or anything like that. It's okay. eerily quiet. There's only violins on the other side, guys. I can't hear anything else. Well, somebody's going to have to flip a coin. Yeah, door number one or door number two. What's it going to be? We've got a an easy way to choose this, boys. Hold on. Unless the coin lands on its side like it did last time. <laughs> no chance, right? A one. It, it did, though. Okay. Left-hand door it is. You may proceed and open it if you wish. All right. So, Spiker, when you open the door, you find that you are looking at a dining room of some sort. Um, 
Oh, hold on, let me increase your guy's vision just a little bit further here, because, I mean, in theory, you guys can see across the room. It's not that big. So let's just change this. There we go. All right, I'll change this for everybody. So uh, what you see is that it is a dining room. There is a large, long, rectangular-shaped table. Looks like it's got about a dozen seats. There's ten, you know, five on each side and then one at each end. Um, there are four large, large oil lamps. That's those things you see on the right and left. And they are lit as well. It's definitely where the sound of the uh, the torch, the torch light, the you know, fire's coming from. And then directly across from you, at the far end of the table, there is an old man sitting. He's facing directly at the door that you've walked through. He's got a massive, bushy, long, gray beard. Where he's sitting, it goes past the table, like into his lap. And he's got a hood pulled up. You can kind of see his face, um, but it's, it's got a hood pulled up. And the the cloak or, or cape that he has on has some strange sigils and, and like, runes uh you know, woven into it. There are mugs and plates and spoons and all sorts of, you know, silverware as if this thing has been set up for a table, but there is no food or drink that you see. Uh, the old man's skin is kind of an ashy gray color. His eyes are quite dark and his robe looks very dusty. You see that there is a door on the north side of the room and there's another door on the east side of the room. You can hear what sounds like uh, muffled voices coming from the door on the right. Chris, I can't select my character. He's stuck at the door. Oh, there he is. Try harder. <laughs> I kept like trying to click them and the door kept opening and closing. <laughs> yeah, these things here are the oil lamps. So yeah, by huge, I mean they take up as much space as one of you guys. So they're like, you know, four or five feet tall. What do you do? Uh, gonna, gonna kind of, oh, nope. I'm now in the same issue that Eric was in. I'll just move my guy with my keyboard. Uh, but as so we, we move, does the guy like, oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Do we all hear the voices? The muffled yes. voices? Okay. Yes. And the, the violin music has gotten slightly louder. Okay. It uh, still sounds quite distant and muffled, but you guys can definitely hear it. Uh, Pell would turn to, well, he would be eyeballing the, the old man something fierce. Uh, but kind of uh, whisper over his shoulder to Henry, Hey, boss, I bought a bomb earlier. What if we open the door and just chuck it in? I could clear out a room quickly, but uh, I think we need to make sure our, our young lad isn't in there first. Oh, we are here to save a kid. Right, 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 right. So keep it at the ready. <laughs> The old man makes no movement, makes no sound. He says and does nothing as you guys enter the room. Should we check this other room first? Do we want to interrogate this guy? I think we should, like, yeah, talk to him at least, like, see what's going on here. Sir. Excuse me, sir. Have you seen a young boy come through here? He does not respond. I think I'm gonna maybe consider opening this door. If I, if I like, do we see if he's breathing? Yeah, looks like he's breathing. Very shallow, but he appears to be alive. Okay. Hey, if we leave you alone, you'll leave us alone, right? We're good. He's creeping me out, guys. See, no, re no response. 
Uh, he, he's as still as a statue. Your silence is scary. It's scarier than talking, actually. <laughs> Isn't that what you do when four strangers walk into your dining room? <laughs> Just clam up and not talk? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Uh, so so yeah, does I, does the door uh, with the muffled voices have a, a keyhole to look through? Um, it does not. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if we listen closely to the the door on the right, do we hear like kid sounds? Like, no, don't eat me, no. <laughs> Uh, no, it, uh, it sounds like older, gruffer voices that are arguing, perhaps. It just sounds like two individuals that are arguing. All right, well, the guy over here is not talking. Maybe the two guys in there, we can grab them and get them to talk. They still say we throw the bomb in there because kids never shut up. And if he's not screaming right now, that means he's not in the room. That means I can throw the bomb in there. Well, um... Logic. Let's see if my presence is... makes sense to me. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> that's two. <laughs> Everything tracks so far. Spiker. I'm gonna like slowly get close to the door and and like gesture towards touching it, but keep my eyes firmly on the the old man. Like, is he gonna move when I touch the door? <laughs> my false dawn. Is that like a blinding light or just normal light? I think it's just normal light. Okay. Um. Oh no. Let's see. I can't like flash bang the room. <laughs> <laughs> breach, I mean, breach, breach! <laughs> that sounds dope as fuck. Get on the ground. I mean, it says pitch black, so I, yeah, we can assume that the opposite of that is uh, brightest is day, blinding light, blackest night. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you could use it as a flashbang. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. And I got this. Oh boy. Okay, so our what is the plan here as you guys have creeped up to the door? Uh, I'm gonna crack the door and then flash bang the room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh go ahead and give me your roll to cast your spell. Okay. Don't fuck up. Noise. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll unlock the door. You may open it. So you open the door slightly. Uh, I don't know how do, how do you cast your spell, Spiker? What do the others see that you do? I, I bring my hands together and shoot them through the crack of the door as I'm opening it. <laughs> okay, so these uh, these poor bastards. Um, what we you know, hole, there's only two of them. Uh, the door like creaks open, and like this pair of creepy ass hands just sticks through the open door, and then there's just the pop. <laughs> of the flashbang light and you hear them shouting oh my eyes uh i won't even roll initiative you guys can can go first here um spiker rushes into the room uh all right hold on everybody stop moving because we this one at a time spiker you rush into the room and you only oh, over here uh there is a small circular table in the middle with four chairs looks like there's a little bit of food and so these guys might have been playing dice or cards. There are two uh, what look like guards in here. You know, they've got, like, some very basic armor, uh, some, like, leathers, and just some very basic weapons. Uh, what else is in here? Um, you can see there are... Uh, there's a staircase that leads to the north. There is a door immediately to your left that leads to the west. And there is another door that leads south. Uh, the one to the west is an iron door. 
um, similar to what you would uh, think you'd find like in a prison. The one to the south is uh, like a heavier wooden door. You can hear some scratching noises coming from the iron door behind it as you launch your uh, your attack here. Um, the, to the north, up the staircase, the staircase goes up. You know, you can't see the floor, obviously, of the next room. But you can see dangling from the ceiling of the next room are some uh, some heavy chains, which uh, end in hooks. And it looks like there's probably a, an, a lamp or a, a torch in there as well. And these guys have a uh, an oil lamp on the... Uh, uh, they boil it? Oh, no, I'm sorry, they have a fireplace. There's a fireplace right here against the wall. It is very warm in here. The fireplace definitely doing its job, keeping it quite cozy. Yeah, there's a bunch of other, like, equipment and stuff scattered across the room. But you come in, you throw the, uh, the door open, do your flashbang, and you're, uh, we're gonna, of course, we're gonna share the Merkbore art here, because it's too good not to. There's your, there's your guards, uh, who are screaming and clutching their eyes. As uh, as you come in, so that's Spiker's turn. Who wants to go next? Uh, I guess Relk will just rush in. Okay. <sighs> and uh, oh, we're just we're just attacking. Okay. Yeah, he's just gonna choose violence. And uh, okay. what changes here is is there DR change? They will be DR six because they're blinded. Okay. They have a uh, D2 armor. Ah, shit. Okay. Well, then, uh, let me just roll that D2. D2. So far, he's taking three damage minus one. He takes two damage. Okay. You strike him. He shouts in pain, screaming. Oh, Next. yeah. That's a good song. Uh, Pell will go. Screaming. <laughs> Hobbling in. Uh let's say there. Okay. He kinda he kinda slid past Rilk to face this main. So God, they look so silly. It's great. <laughs> they look so goopy. Alright. So DR twelve. DR six. DR six. Oh man, there's less. <laughs> and uh Okay. Here we go. Oh, come on now. Come on now. What? Jeez. I'm pal. And they do D. They have armor, so you don't do any damage. Oh, so I don't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> so you strike this guy across the shoulder, but it, it hits one of, like, the studs on his leather vest and it at the perfect angle, and it doesn't actually do anything. Oh, I guess, uh... Or... Help Man, us! In violence. Oh, <laughs> I see later, Henry must do the job. I'm gonna <laughs> give it a, a hit on the chaos blade here. We're under attack, help! <laughs> <laughs> They're killing me. Noise. Oh, oh no! Uh oh! Uh oh! Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Son of a! Eight damage. damage. Henry, how does he die? Um, I think he'll, since it's the Zweihander is a large, or the Chaos Blade is a large Zweihander, uh, he's just gonna hit him kind of in the shoulder and carve into his torso a bit, uh, kind of s separating his arm and some of the other end, his right end. Oh, all right. Yeah, you get down to like halfway through his torso. He kind of splits open, gurgling, blood everywhere. He collapses into one of the chairs. It gets knocked over. And uh, this guy will still be blind this turn. So he rushes in your direction, swinging wildly. Uh, but you can increase your DR to uh, 16 as he's trying to swing. He does D6 damage. He pulls out a short sword. Who goes there? Six. And and we were sure those guys were cannibals, right? <laughs> They're in the cannibal den, boss. Oh, geez. oh almost a D20. Oh, a lucky hit oh, strikes you for fuck. five I damage. I don't know. Eat, I don't know. 
I'll eat some damage. I've got a lot of HP, I guess. Are you sure? You guys are up. Um, <laughs> yeah, just keep beating on the one who's who's over. Oh, he right. he's died. DR he's DR twelve now because the spell has ended. All right, I'm gonna try and crack him with my staff now. Yeah. What is his armor? A D two armor. And what is this fucking song? Uh, yeah, dude. Trial of Trial Thorns. Of horns. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, blood damage. Nice. Well done. <laughs> Damn, Chris, chill. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hell's gonna rush it. Going, yeah, my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Watch how True Master does it. This fucking guy with his battle axe. I got this. Don't you fucking worry. Yep. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> so oh. I got a nat one, which brings oh. me down to zero, which means that my weapon is broken. <laughs> All right. Or lost. So, pal, you go to strike this guy, and you're so enthusiastic that you overswing, you lose the grip on your weapon, and it goes flying head over head uh, right into the fireplace. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Rill thinking to himself, if that was like this, I can certainly be promoted into this religion. Let's yep. fucking do it, boys. <laughs> Not with that, we can't. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Holy shit, a seven. Nobody Let's buy do. a battle axe. Not so Never easy again. when he can defend himself. <laughs> Fucking hell. Fucking apparently, um, I'll trust Henry to to, to wipe up the the drag oh, over here. here. Oh no! Eighteen. <laughs> All right, only four damage from that one. All right. Well, he's going to take a morale test because he's getting attacked by four people. He's taking a big chunk of damage, and he sees the shredded remains of his friend gurgling on the floor. Uh, so let's do a morale test here. He. Throws his sword on the ground, drops to his knees, and says, oh, Please don't kill me. I give up. I give up. Please. Defer to Henry. Uh, has a child come through here earlier? Where? Uh, seek to restore him to his mother's. He, he's like, y yeah, Yes, yes, we, we. Uh, Fletcher had us, had us take the boy. He's, he's here. Down these stairs? Or... Uh, I don't know where, where Fletcher's put him. We, we gave him the Fletcher, and, and that's the last we saw of him. Oh. That was earlier okay. today. We'll have to continue on then. Uh, Pell, take, take this sword. Gesturing to the one he's thrown down. Yeah, it's just a regular sword. Does D6 damage. Cool. Yes, sir. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Picks it up and, and uh, like, presents it to Henry as if, like, he meant give it to me. <laughs> no, when we face resistance, stab stab people with it. Oh, me! Not this, not this guy. Oh, me. Okay, Skip. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I'm on it. Don't throw it into the fire, though. No, I that was, I didn't mean to. Okay. At, at this point, you hear the handle That's of better. his previous battle axe go up in flames. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bob. Okay. His name was Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you clear out. We'll need to continue on. Are you saying that to the guard? Yeah, the guard. He's like, uh, okay. Uh, and he like keeps his hands up in the air. And he, like, tries to kind of skirt past you guys and makes his way towards the door you came through. Do you let him leave? I do, sure. All right. Yeah, once he's out of the room, he starts running. Great. Uh, let's continue through these stairs. Yeah. Sure thing, boss. Okay. That is number eight. Okay. Um, all right, well, whoever's going first, go ahead. I'll tell you what you see. We're still trying to sneak, or? I mean, 
That guy did scream in pain. I have, somewhat trying to sneak, just not slowly. <laughs> we haven't really been quiet. <laughs> it doesn't matter at this point, I don't think, yeah. No. We'll All right, Spiker, you can move up one more completely. space and kind of see the room a little bit. So, um, what you see when you get up here, uh, it is a room with chains hanging from the ceiling. Multiple, multiple chains. They all end in various sized and shaped hooks. Uh, many of them have uh, blood, dra uh, yeah, dried blood or dripping blood on them. And you can see the floor has bloody drag marks and footprints and tracks all over the place. To the north, there is an iron door, which looks like it does not have a handle of any sort. Uh, to your west, there's an open archway that leads into another room. Um, the stairs you guys are walking up are kind of these rickety wooden stairs, but they seem to hold you guys as you make your way through. I need someone to please roll me a... Da, 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 da. Roll me a D2, please. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay, I guess I can throw that if no one is. And then roll me a D4 after you roll the D2. Okay. Two. Okay. And a one. All right. So, Spiker, as you make your way into this room, you see that there is this ghostly form that seems to just come out of the wall and kind of slowly float across the room. Uh, it stops and kind of turns to face you. It vaguely has the shape of a, of a human, of a man, uh, but like its lower half kind of ends in just a ghostly, wispy like tail. There's not really legs. And it's transparent and you can't make out a lot of the details, especially the face is very fuzzy. Um, but it holds out a hand and then you hear a very distant, echoing voice say, Please help. And I think that's a good place to take our break. All so right. let's take our break there. Boop, There's supposed to be a pause button for recording, but there is not on my thing here. So I guess we'll just stop the recording and we will be right back. Sicko mode. All right. Take five. All right. The RB. All right. Be boys. Well, listeners, we are back. Spiker, this ghostly figure has approached you, pleading with you, begging for your help. What do you do? Um, I try and poke it with my staff. It just kind of whists right through it. And he kind of wails a bit, almost as if in agony. Anybody seeing this? Yeah, you all see it. Uh, yes. Holy shit! I think it's time to keep moving. I'm going to try and ignore it and just kind of like walk around it. Yeah, it doesn't like make any hostile moves or anything. Uh, Henry, as, as you step into the room, it kind of turns towards you like... Please help. Well, we will avenge you. You feel cannibals. <laughs> when you say that, you feel like there's a, a shift in its mood, and it it almost feels to you like its its mood lightens a little bit, as if it understands what you're saying. I'm gonna also try to sort of walk around it, <laughs> not take its hands because it spooks me. Very much the same. Okay, yeah, it does the same thing yeah. to each of you, kind of pleading for help. Where are you guys going? Now, is this just where do you want to go? Here? And then the the door at the top is a big iron one with no obvious way to open it. Correct. I want to fuss around with the door a little bit. Like, uh, 
try to push it. Maybe knock it on it a bit. Does not budge at all. And when you hit it, it is certainly metal. Feels very heavy duty. Okay. We'll have to go around. Let's head through there. Oh, there's a, a door behind us. Not back that way. <clears throat> oh, yeah, from the first room. And I think there was also a door over here we could have gone in. Correct. Curious to see what what's in this room. There, Those doors... Well, no, you're right. Well, I will let what, you guys know, because you you're standing there, there's no door, there's just this opening. So, room number nine, um, on the, the the southern wall, you can see is covered. It's, it's like a natural cave wall. It is covered with these beautiful, sparkling, shining, green, pink, violet-colored gems that appear to be, like, fixed into the wall. Uh, to the north... You can see, basically here, there was once a wall which has since collapsed into this large, massive cavern. And almost on the edge of your vision, um, you can see, Spiker, that it looks like there's another area across this big pit. And you can't quite make out what's there. You see some, like, flames. Uh, like, perhaps there is um, a fire lit over there. And you think you can see the shape of somebody moving around. But it's it's so far, and there's so much... Um, it's so dark in here. Also, uh, you can see that there's a large pillar in the middle of this, like, pit... And this, this pit, when you look down, it's not very far down, but it looks like there's this blackish sludge that's filling up this pool right here. And then here, here, and here, it looks like the walls to the other rooms have collapsed and made this pit in the middle. Um, the pillar that you see... Uh, you realize this is the sound, or this is the area where the music is coming from. I'm going to share a picture with you guys. There's a massive white stone pillar. kind of matches the color of the stone you guys have been walking on. On top of that pillar is the most peculiar scene of two skeletons playing violins. Uh, did it show that picture to you guys? It showed us the map. Oh, that's not it. Uh, do you guys have number 10 in that list? Wait, what if I do this? Let me try this. How about that? Oh, yeah. That. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's pretty different. cool. That's and awesome. If you guys scroll down, you can see there's like this hazy... It, it smells very acrid uh, from the, the sludge. And there's like this hazy steam or fog coming up from the sludge that uh, makes it hard to see across the other way. Also, Spider, you can see there is another room over here to your right. It's a little bit easier to see because it's closer. It looks like there's a large statue of some sort uh, on the edge there in the room. You can't make out the details, though, because of the, the hazy fog. Hmm. I think I like your idea. We should check the other rooms first. And we'll backtrack a little bit. And, okay. I don't know. Maybe try to breach this first door. Uh, back down here. Yeah. What about what about uh what about this one behind the old guy? Or not behind the old guy, but this room that. Uh, let me check. I'm making sure none of these are locked. This one's locked. Uh, the, the, so the iron door that leads to the west is indeed locked when you try it. Okay. 
This one is not, the one to the south. Third time's the charm. All right. So when you open this door, you find yourself in what looks like uh, a bedroom or perhaps a library that was turned being used as a bedroom. It's hard to tell. There's a large bookcase on the eastern wall that stretches from one side of the room to the other. It's got a ton of books and scrolls and literature. It's quite, quite the gigantic bookcase. On the left-hand side, you see there are two beds. And within those beds, you see the forms of these skeletons that appear to be sleeping. And, of course, we've got some more awesome Merkbor art here to share with you guys. Um, on the northern bed closest to the door you come through is the skeleton of what you're guessing is a man. He's, he is alone in the bed in some rotting clothes. Yes. Uh, the, in the other bed, there are two skeletons. One that looks a little smaller than the man. And then a second skeleton that these these uh, these two in this bed they're embracing each other, a smaller skeleton that looks like that of a child. Ooh. Huh. Uh, also in here, there is a pair of torches, keeping the room kind of glimly glowing, and next to the between the two beds, there is a small table uh, with a clay vase that holds some withered flowers. I don't think this is the room, boss. That seems right. Let's, uh... Let's see if we can get in from the other side of that. <laughs> I'm gonna gesture back towards the old man. The door back there. And then we'll slowly... Close this one. Slowly back out. <laughs> <Boop>. Okay. <laughs> oh. But but before that, I'm gonna search the shelves in the library for the book How to Serve Man. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh give me a is the D four? Yeah, roll me a D four. Oh sure. All right. You start looking through these books. Most of them are written in some insane, indecipherable script that you can't really make out. However, there is one that you find, uh, and as you're looking at it, you read the text, like, in your head, and then you have this sudden urge to read it out loud to the, the four of you, or the other rest of you. So, Henry, you're still, like, right here. Um, to the rest of you, the other three of you, you see Henry looks through this this book, and all of a sudden he just shouts, "You dead, arise!" And <laughs> you expect the skeletons to rise and attack yeah. you, but they do not. Instead, a tiny little crystallized demon appears in the room. Kind of pops out of nowhere, like right next to you, Henry. And it, I need you to roll a DR12 presence test, please. Uh, ooh. Ooh. Uh, All right. Our main man, Henry. Yeah. You feel something pounding in your head. You feel like this shock wave of psychic energy kind of ripple out from this thing, and it almost like knocks you against the bookcase, but you steal your resolve, and it doesn't seem to have any real effect on you. Um, however, I will need the other three of you to make this DR12 presence test as well. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. Unfortunately, you're too close. 19. Our old relic. 
So good. All right, you are 17, all 18. okay from the mental <sighs> shockwave of the crystal demon, after which it shatters into a thousand pieces and disappears. <laughs> okay. Hey, That's boss. Uh, uh, maybe, over, everybody. Hey, boss, maybe put that shit down. Maybe put that down. Yeah, when you look back down at the book, Henry, there's no text in it. It's completely blank. Hey. Oh, weird. Leave no scroll unturned, my uh, old philosophy teacher always said. You may want to leave these ones unturned. Do you, uh, are you taking that book with you or do you put it back on the shelf? Uh, I think, I think I'll put it back. Um, okay. At the edge of carrying capacity here, so. <laughs> All right. I don't have a lot of extra space. <clears throat> okay. You may proceed. Can Rilk hey. grab that book? Sure. Rilk you can do that. Or you can try to grab something else. And now he he wants to see like that book. Uh, Pell's gonna start hugging the wall behind the old man. Yeah, the old man has not moved an inch, a minuscule, from okay. where you found him. Uh, okay, so Rilk, you go back in to grab that same book. Henry and Spiker, what are you guys doing? Uh, well, that Pella's started inching towards the other door. I'm not kind of yeah. behind. I'm going to head out. Okay. So Rilk... You grab that book, you look through it, it is completely blank. There's nothing inside of it. Well, he'll, he'll put it in his bag for later inspection. Okay. All right. Um, as you exit the room, you hear the clattering of bones as the three skeletons sit <laughs> upright, Shit. jump off the beds, and roll initiative. Yet. That one's on me, boys. That one's on me. How dare you take the book? <laughs> you fucker, that's our book. Crank the music. Oh, oh. yeah. Get fucked, Rilk. So you'll put you in the doorway here, because that's yeah, where you're yeah. standing. Shit. So the, the man skeleton stands up, and he strikes at you. You see that he pulls a jagged looking scimitar from under the bed and takes a swing at you. Uh, this does d6 damage. DR12. Okay. Nice. Easy. Nice, Haru. Nice, uh, and then the mother and child skeleton also leap off the bed and they come at you swinging and clawing with skeletal hands. These do d4 damage with their bony fists. Okay. First one. Take no damage. Oh, look at that. Wait, D two That's plus bad. one? Oh, you got a shield. Got a shield, baby. Yeah. Oof. Oh, but I oof. take two. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> so Oof. the mother swings and you manage to get the shield up in time, but you're not ready for the kid who just punches you square in the balls. <laughs> uh, I'm going to bash the uh, father's head in if I can. What's you the DR? They are 12. And then any armor? No. Okay. <laughs> oh, we will re for the win. We'll re roll that. <laughs> oh, even worse. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next. Uh, I guess I hear the to do and. Try to rush to his aid. Yeah, so that's as far as you can go. You can attack through the doorway there, because um, him and the 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 man skeleton uh, are kind of fighting in the doorway. Um, meddling man skeleton. <laughs> okay, I'll swing the chaos blade at this guy. Hell yeah! Uh, for. Oof. Oh, <laughs> big old eight damage. 
you just you strike this thing in the shoulder and your blade goes all the way down to the pelvis just shattering all the bones and the rib cage and the thing just falls apart to nothing Blech. the sword clatters on the floor spiker and pell you are up yeah, i guess i'm gonna run back all right Uh, Pell, yeah, would go shit and start shuffling against the wall and back out. Okay. You can see Henry and Rilk in the doorway fighting off these two skeletons. If you wish to attack, you'd have to move into the spot where the previous skeleton was. I'm going to hold up my my silver crucifix in their direction. I don't know if it does oh. anything, but I'm gonna do it. Uh, give me a presence test, DR twelve. Ah, so close. No, it doesn't seem like it has any effect. Pal, do you do anything as you run into the room? Uh, I don't think I'm. He's got slower uh, movement, so I wouldn't. I don't think I'm close enough to do anything on the first run in okay that's fair well next round uh the two skeletons continue to attack rilks they want their book back uh so give me two more defensive rolls luckily the head of the household and his sword are no longer a threat no damage from the first one wow so very tanky and then a dodge for the second one all right you guys are up I guess I'll, I'll keep... Uh, yeah, I'm going to aim for the kid. <laughs> That's when always the first one you should... Yep, always. Yeah. Always aim for the kid first. <laughs> Max oh, damage. Oh, damage. Max damage. The kid just explodes into bones <laughs> that fly all across the room. <laughs> I'll, move, I'll move further in in case anyone else wants to... <laughs> oh, you're, sta- you're standing on the, the, the mom's the kilt in it. Oh, I, this is the kid right here. Oh, yeah, right, easy. There you go. All right. You, if you you've killed someone, I see this uh, zombie <laughs> explode, explode into gore, and I know that that's my cue to start playing. The oh, bones. the fucking flute <laughs> for eight days. The mother reaches out to try to grab the book from you, uh, Rilk, as you run past her, and you see that all the bones start to vibrate, and then they just poof into a bunch of dust, and she's gone. You guys are getting good at this. Yeah. Practice. It is. All right, we're going to switch over here. All right. Cute, creepy music. It's definitely quiet, other than the sound of the haunting violin tune carrying on the wind. Did you say anything to make them get up? I think I said, um, I'm taking this book. And then (laughs) they just got up. (laughs) No, I I didn't do anything, boss. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know whether there's this kind of an attack. You know, I don't tell you. No, I understand. (laughs) Um, But now that that's over. um, I want everyone to zoom in and just have a closer look look around. Look at that picture right there of the two bodies holding each other on the the bed there. (laughs) Embraced forever in death. Nice. Very nice. Right there, folks. Yeah, look at it. I'm sorry, what are you doing, Henry? I'm going to more thoroughly look around the room under beds and maybe tell somebody to pick up a scimitar if that's still around yeah that's all that's really here is the scimitar um anybody else who wants to search the uh uh the bookcase can also roll me a d4 see if they find anything else fancy uh i'll take the scimitar if nobody's gonna take it yeah go ahead and i'll throw i'll roll that uh 1d4 and a three. 
All right. The text of this book is completely incomprehensible to you. I don't understand a lick of this. We got a three, two. Somebody get this out of my hands. Same thing. And a one. Oh, boy. Uh, You find a booklet, and it contains a random unclean scroll. Ooh, sick. Roll me a d10, please. I got a one. Demon of Capillaries. One creature suffocates for d6 rounds, losing d4 hit points per round. Oh. (laughs) Jesus. That's That's awesome. That's so cool. All right. Yep. You can add that to your inventory. Sick. Where is uh, Scimitar on the. It's just on the floor right here. No, I mean, like, uh, like in weapons wise. Or would that Uh, just be. Just it's a sword that does D six damage. D six, okay. Well, now that that's over, let's try this other door. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. All right, yeah, back to uh, yeah, that door. About, about yay. Okay. This one. Looks like a hallway. Yes, yeah, so there's a very very long hallway that stretches on quite a ways um there is a okay let me see okay on the right hand side uh just as you open the door spiker there is another door that looks to be a similar iron door to the one you saw in the guard room further down the hall about halfway down the hall you see that there are there's a section of the hall where there are these large paintings on either side of the wall. You can't make out what they are until you get up to it, but you see there's paintings hanging up. And then further along, uh, when you get towards the, the north end of the room, there is a... Uh, what is this? There's this strange looking device that actually you can't quite see because it's it's so far at the end of the hall so but you can hear some machinery kind of towards the end of the hall and you can you can actually when you open this door surprisingly the violin music gets louder you can tell over here on this part of the wall uh there's like a window or an opening in this wall and you can you can look over the area where the pillar is at so the music of the violins becomes more audible this is where the music's coming it's okay getting, yeah it's so getting louder here on, on the end of your vision here you can see there's a device that's making some sort of mechanical noise how odd. That's the way you want to go. Hell, should we try this door over here? Gesturing behind him. Oh, well, we certainly can. It is also locked. I uh, probably not. <laughs> uh, is there any, uh, sort of opening or, or like kind of tiny raven shaped hole <laughs> no there's just looks like there's a keyhole for the okay lock. all right well i don't have a lock pick or anything one of the guys might have a key can we do we check their bodies you did not don't uh-oh, spaghetti Let's go check their bodies. Well, there's only one, because you let the other one get away. Oh. So roll me a D2. <laughs> Actually, no. Better yet. High or low, Sean? Ah, oh, I always go high. <laughs> Fuck no. Nope. The other guy had the key. Should have killed him. Shit. And he's long gone. Yeah. What about the old man? You can Maybe. pat him down. <laughs> Damn it. Uh-huh. 
We could try breaking the door down. Or knocking. Try knocking. Yeah. When you knock, okay. the, the scratching gets louder and it's you can hear muffled sounds, but it's a heavy it's a heavy iron door, so you can't make out what those sounds are. Oh boy. I'd do like a like a rhythmic rap. I'll shave a haircut on the door. See if it's just scratching. No, there doesn't have any any rhyme or reason to the noise on the other side, and it doesn't like return your pattern or anything like that. Okay. Well, best to move on for now. Maybe we'll find a key further in. And maybe we don't want to go in there anyway. Yeah, I Try agree. Uh, what's what's on this first painting? Um, okay, well, when you're examining the paintings, they all appear to be various uh, landscapes, but they are all very, very bland landscapes, Henry. They are, like, it'll be like, what would you imagine would be like a nice forest setting, but all the trees are, like, dead and leafless. Or, you know, something that looks like hills, when you get closer, you realize it's just, like, the most barren wasteland of a desert. It's like stuff like that. Now these are all quite bleak. Uh, pity whoever <laughs> hails from the land that these depict. Did you imagine something more upbeat in a cannibal lair? No, I mean, <laughs> could be better, could be worse. This is sort More of floral, perhaps. Manner. It's like not so bleak to be, you know, uh, strewn with limbs across the trees and like the remains of half eaten people lashed to rocks. That sort of thing that maybe a cannibal would be into. It's just old. Oh, you know what, guys? I'm sorry. I forgot one thing. Now that I'm looking at the map here, this, um, uh, when you guys were in room number nine with the gems, basically this wall right here, there's a tunnel, a small tunnel that heads west. Is it big enough for a raven? <laughs> oh, yeah, it'd be big enough for one of you. Just be, a, you know, tight fit, but. So, like, it's a tunnel under that goes like under the wall yeah that's what this this indicates it's supposed to indicate the tunnel that goes underneath that mm -hmm. part of the floor interesting i was being a little meta there it's like i just want to ask about this first one because i don't have to step onto this square <laughs> it's like the the clumsiest map trap of all time perhaps <laughs> but that doesn't mean there's not not a trap there so spiker what's on what do you think about this other painting? Well, let me go take a look. <laughs> oh, you see another one. It's oh, this uh, one. It's like a like a a frosty ice landscape, and there's like no detail in it other than just like endless ice. Just as boring as the last. Let's keep moving. Well, Spiker, now that you're that far in, you can see over here, there is a trap door on the floor. And then next to that door is a... Uh, where is it? Uh, it looks... So there's, there's three more of the little oil lamps hanging from the ceiling. As you pass the wall here, there's like an opening in the wall, kind of like a window that looks down towards the pit with the sludge and the pillar with the skeletons. Um, there's a hidden trap door here, and next to it, there is a, a rusty pump that appears to be dripping out liquid into like a small square pool. The pump itself is fairly thin but tall uh, from floor to top of the pump it's probably about three and a half feet tall uh, the bottom half is basically just a square 
and then these things sticking out the sides are basically just supports that go into the floor but the top half you can see it's the smaller part here the top half looks like it's been carved to almost look like the towers and the keep of a fortress and then there's one of those like old school pump handles on the side where you can like actually like pump the liquid kind of like you'd see like on an old farm like a like a well pump type of thing and then sticking out the front here is a statue of what looks like a bull or perhaps some sort of horned lizard and the liquid drips out of the mouth into the little stone square container bucket thing in front of it the liquid is kind of a muddy color and i need you to please roll me a d4 Ooh. Ooh, Four. okay 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 all right give me a dr16 perception test spiker Henry, I suppose you could do this no. too, because you're, you're close to him. Six. Okay. Oh. Oh, yep, that's, that's, for me. that's that's all that uh, that's in the room. Okay, I guess I'm going to try and creep closer to the pump thing. Okay. Yeah, the room ends here. It doesn't go any further. What's everybody else doing? I'm gonna follow him in. All right. Yes, I will also follow. Okay, Pell and Rilk, you guys can give me perception or presence tests as well. Sixteen. Okay. <laughs> and nothing. Another that net. one, baby. Ooh. A nineteen oh. for Pell. All right. So Pell. You are the only one who notices, as you walk in this room, up in the corner on the ceiling, you catch something that doesn't quite match the other shadows. At first, you think it might be like some cobwebs or something like that. But as your eyes focus, you realize it is... At first, you think, oh, it's a skeleton? What? You realize it is indeed a skeleton, but it is a skeletal shaped spider. Ah, it looks fuck. Kind of like that. Oh, oh God, no. It's hanging, that. hanging upside oh. down from the ceiling in a small little nest. And roll initiative, please. Uh, pal, just pal. Yeah, that's um, me. You're the only one who gets a chance to react here. This thing wins initiative on a one through four, so you need to get a five or six to outwit it. Oh! Which you do, all right. You what have a team? chance to act as you realize it's about to probably jump down on one of your unsuspecting teammates. You know what that means, folks. Um. So Pell's going to shout, Fucking Skeleton Spider! And, uh... He's going to take out the bomb. And it's he's going to... in the corner. The nesting death is what this thing is called. Oh, that's oh, so cool. Shit. Yeah, so... It's, uh, it should mention it's about the size of, like, a, a dog. Fuck that. No way. Uh, yeah, so... I'm going to throw the bomb, obviously. So... I don't know how, how that works. How did we do it last time? Uh, it is uh, just range like a... attacks are a, pr a presence test in this game. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, here we go. Seventeen. Well, no. What was it? Eighteen. Okay, you hit. Roll damage. It has a uh, D two armor from its thick carapace. Alright. Okay, so that's. D ten. Nope. There we go. All right, oh, four. almost the ten. All right, yeah. and it has D two armor. So two. Right. right. Yeah. Well, you need to roll the armor. Oh, 
And that's the the coin? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Alright. So nice. it takes cool. Three points of damage. Alright. Alright. Um well it has a chance to attack here. Uh and let's see who it's going to attack. I wanna. <laughs> it's going for Spiker. Oh no! It, it leaps, it skitters across the ceiling yeah. and then leaps down at you, Spiker. Please roll me a DR12 test to defend yourself. It does D4 damage with its bite. All right. Ah. It strikes you. Ooh, for one damage. And then I need you to make a DR12 toughness test. All right. Well done. You can feel something coursing through your uh, veins, but you are unaffected. And now, the other three heroes, you may go. I mean, real quick, uh, real quick, just run up, right? That's all he can do. Yeah, swamp the thing. <laughs> You've got eight legs, and so do we. It combined. <laughs> right. Who wants to start enacting violence? What's, what's its armor? All right. One D two. Yes. It's got thick carpus. Thick with <laughs> two Qs. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Um. No, I'll save my last omen for, for something bad. All right. Off me. Um. Oh. Oh. I'm going to use my omen. It, it pays off for zero yeah. damage. <laughs> it feels so bad. All right. Oh, boy. And I'm Henry gonna... with the oh. Blade of Destruction... Here we go. Ooh. Nice. All right, Pell gets. Ooh. Oh, Pell, you already went this round. Oh, sorry. Uh, I thought we Henry, were on a different round. Henry misses with the Chaos Blade. Oh. No, bueno. Rare L for Henry. All right, nice. uh, that is the end of the first round. It is a new round now, and the heroes do get to go first. So you guys get back-to-back -back turns here. Uh, so everybody can attack once more. <laughs> You want me to just take that roll, Chris? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, so two damage. A couple more bony limbs get knocked off of it, <laughs> but it's still going strong. Gravy. All right. Uh, I don't want the chaos blade again. You mean miss again? <laughs> oh, yeah. A bit of a miss. I'm actually going to throw an omen at that one to reduce the DR. Okay. Hit with it. You probably hit then. Yeah, right? DR 12 down to 8, so more than yep. All so right. Eight. Oh, it's oh. getting higher 11. Oh, All right. Oh, wait, hold on. And also shield. It absorbed okay. 1. That is 10 ten. damage. You crush this thing into a thousand pieces. Oh, damn. The nesting death is no more. Now oh, the Becklore guides my blade. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You are free to continue your little romp through the dungeon. Ugh. Have any of you seen a thing like this before? No. No. <laughs> Definitely not. No. Oh. <laughs> Sp spooky musical staying there. Um, I need to move faster. This is getting out of hand. Maybe we should get this door open. Yeah. Yeah. Can we try the the trap door here? All right. The trap door. Uh, very simply lifts up 
and you see that there is a step ladder, and it leads down to. Uh, it looks like it leads down to this area, where you can see the glow of flames. You can also hear what sounds like a hammer on an anvil. Hmm. Well, before we go down there, uh, can we check out the corpse of? <laughs> can we check out the corpse of this spider? Maybe it uh, ate someone with a lot of gold or silver, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> there's it's there's nothing ball. on the spider. Nothing. Okay. Um. I'm gonna. I guess before we descend, I'll throw. I have one of those m medical kits. I'd like to try to use on myself, unless. Any of you guys have taken a serious bite of damage? Nope. Okay, cool. I'm gonna do that then, if that's okay. What does this thing do? Treasures. Medicine box. D6. Three. Pretty good. Okay, cool. Um, let's get down there. There's some kind of activity maybe we can find the kid there all right march in order please it's a, you know it's a small step ladder so you only go one at a time real cute yes, that's me again <laughs> our spiker either way i'll go second i can go third okay spiker uh you make your way down there, are you trying to be quiet? Yes. Okay, give me an agility test, please. Ouch. Alright. So you make your way down this step ladder, and uh, as you do, you get when you get your foot on the floor, it's wet and slippery. And you lose your balance and you don't you, you almost fall but you do manage to catch yourself on like a nearby table uh without like landing prone but you knock over some stuff that's on the table and it makes a loud you know clunk noise when you're down here we'll uh put you over here spiker so when you're down here um you realize there are these two big hearths on the northern wall that's where you're seeing the flames come from there's another door on the east side of the room opposite you one of the hearths looks like uh, a smelter type hearth that you'd use at a blacksmith forge and you see that there is um, a blacksmith anvil uh, with a man that's currently working at the anvil the other one looks like uh, an oven that you'd be using to, to cook meals down here. And then you realize that not only is this a forge, but it is also a slaughterhouse. There are massive, massive chains hanging from the ceiling here, all of which are covered in uh, mostly caked and somewhat recent blood. Large chunks of meat and body parts hang from many of these hooks. To your left, there's a large table with a couple body parts, blood everywhere, cleaver or two laying next to these body parts on the table. And then you see the man who is working the forge. Uh, he turns to face you and he looks like he's about seven feet tall. He's got kind of the build like Dave Batista. Huge upper body, ripped, jacked guy. He's got a simple set of like dark trousers and heavy boots on. And then his upper body seems to be covered in either tattoos or scars. It's hard to tell in this light. Um, the only thing he has covering his upper torso is like a butcher's apron uh, or perhaps a blacksmith's apron. You can't tell because it's covered in soot and blood. And when he hear, he hears when you hit the table and he turns to face you, 
his head is bald shaven and he has uh just a little bit of like a like a goatee going on and you realize this must be Fletcher the cannibal warlock roll me initiative please that's some cool art oh the enemies go first he sees you he drops the hammer and he pulls out this wicked looking flail from his belt and let's see what does he do oh he charges you and when you see when he unravels this flail, it looks like it's glowing like a hot ember. And he's going to swing it at you. Uh, this will be... It's just regular DR12. It does D8 damage. Oof, that's rough. Okay. You managed to dodge out of the way as he smashes into the wall next to you. You guys hear this from up above. Uh, whoever's, you know, directly looking down or about to climb down next, you can basically see, like, probably the back of Spiker as he slips and, you know, clearly something's attacking him. Oh, shit. Yeah, that would be me. How, uh, I guess, narrow is this? I guess is it plausible for us to get through the trapdoor in a single round? Uh, well, only one person can go down at a time. Um, and Spiker's basically standing at the foot of it. So there's only room for one of you to get down there right now. And then that person would be standing directly at the bottom of the thing, uh, the, the step ladder. Because Spiker's basically moved one space ahead. So the step ladder's like in this square, basically, we'll say. Okay. So I guess, uh, who was going down? Real? Uh, I was after, uh, uh, Spiker. Alright, so we'll put okay. you there. Oh, I'm sorry, pal. Bef bef before you jump down, or I guess if I can do this through the window, I was, Whoa. uh, gonna cast Mitzel's Blind Your Eye for my turn, since I, I'll be stuck on the other side of the trapdoor. On, uh, the guy going, or yeah, Pell going through the the door. Sure, yeah. Which I do by clicking this button. Oh, twenty. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, the noise. <laughs> okay. Oh, with the you got the the critical. Looks like it did something extra. Result from the Eldritch Elevations table. I don't know what the fuck that is. Whenever a creature critically succeeds at activating a power, roll a d20 and consult the table below. Oh, well, it rolled it already, so... Oh, you know what? That's probably, um... Because there's miscast rules. I bet that's, uh... Yeah, let me, let me check something here real quick. That is probably uh, if you get a critical success. Do I actually have this table? Let me see. I think I... in the core book is only miscasts on on the ones. Let's but see. That might be in the um, the Forgularium. I forget what the, the other the, book is called. The fer the Ferratory. I feel like I was pretty close. <laughs> I mean, it's clearly rolling something here in Foundry, but I do not know where this table is located. So we will defer to what it says there, which is, if you want to read that for us, please. It says two and two headed. This power doubles the number of targets and the result of the die roll. Wow. So you affect two people with the power then? Yeah, so we got uh, one round <laughs> doubled to two rounds, uh, but I can affect two people, which if it's cool, it would be uh, the guy standing next to the boss, if that, 
if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, if he's in range, that's that's fine. Yeah. Go for it. Sounds good to me. All right. We'll leave it at that because I I don't I don't think criticals and fumbles should roll on the same table here, and so we'll save the arcane catastrophe table for critical ones for fumbles. So this table seems to work just fine. Because clearly it's giving you a benefit, so that's how a critical I would imagine works. Uh, okay, so you're both affected by that. Um, so then Pell, yes. you are able to get down there and. Yeah. Okay, can I uh, scooch like so? Yeah. Okay, I'll do that, and we'll just get to get to swinging. All right, go for it. All right. <laughs> uh, Dr. Twelve. Yes. And uh, two for armor. He has D4 armor. He has hardy oh, skin. Okay. It's going to be real hard to hurt him. Here we go. Oh, no. That's not good. Um, this you get hit on like... with uh, the invisibility. Oh, I get six? You get yeah, that's what. Yeah. Blind your oh. eyes. Uh, attack defend with DR6 until damaged. Okay. Or for two rounds. Okay. So I would have passed. Was it a one round? Didn't you roll one? Yeah, but I double it with the crit. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So you hit him. Okay. Uh, so that's 1d6. Oh. Noise. Mix. But he gets d4. D4 oh, no. armor. Oh, no. Give me a one, baby. That's hey, not it, baby. We're damage is still real good, right? Yeah, here we go. I envision the scene from Diablo 1 when you first encounter the butcher. <laughs> Just getting absolutely wrecked. <laughs> that's what this room looks like, and that's what he sounds like. Fresh meat. And then yes. he kills you in two hits because you're a level three character fighting a boss that's way beyond your level. <laughs> You think I'm level three. That's very generous of you. <laughs> All right. Uh, who's next? Oh, wait. Hold on. I'm sorry. Um, I need you to make a DR8 agility test, please, uh, pal. Okay. Okay. So after you hit him, you hear this wailing scream and chunks of human flesh fall from the ceiling around you. You don't get hit, uh, but you feel as though they're trying to strike you as they pour down out of the sky. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> Next. Yeah, come join the party. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm already I'm downstairs, so I'm going to Try and whack him with my staff. Go for it. The D4 armor. Yep. And your DR is a six. Easy. Oh. Never nope. mind. <laughs> Hurry up. All right. Uh, Rilk will go down, I guess, and try to help. There is no more room for you to move when you get down here. You can stand at the bottom of the ladder, but that's it. Guys, get out of the way. And Henry, you well, you already went because you cast your spell. So I throw a weapon. Uh, yeah. What are you gonna throw at him? I throw a fucking warhammer. Ooh. Okay, that'll be a presence test, and you're throwing a warhammer. I would say it's dr sixteen. No, we miss. All right, goes flying across the room somewhere, lost in the darkness. Probably striking the wall somewhere. <laughs> I tried. And then Fletcher will strike uh, Pell, since uh, Pell hit him. Yes. To make your defensive roll. Okay. You can feel the heat of his flail as it rips through the air. Ooh. Ooh. What's the What's the attack on that? 
He's 12. Well, if you're invisible, it's... Oh, yeah. Oh, six? Yeah. Damn, right? Yeah, you defend with six health, though, um, until you get hit. Okay. But the incoming attack is still 12. No, that's... It's it's a six, because you're rolling oh. it, so low is always good. Okay. Oh. All right. You are good. You guys can act. Okay, Pell will dodge upwards. Nice. And skirt around him. <laughs> I'll nimbly pimbly. <laughs> Give me an agility test, because ah, you're trying to you're trying to move through the table. Oh. Okay. Uh, it's crowded down here. There's a lot of stuff. Plus, there's all the chains hanging from the ceiling. Oh, fuck. A nine. All right. So you trip okay. and uh, you try oh, to like here. dive over this and you like slip in the uh, the blood that's on the table <laughs> and uh, you, you hit the ground. He's going to get an attack of opportunity on you. Roll Rock. a another uh, <clears throat> another attack here. Okay. Oh, just oh. okay. You feel some of your clothes get singed as the flail swings past you. He's quite fast for such a big guy. Not cool. All right, All right. you may go. All right. Well, I you went, so we'll, we'll um go up here and uh, start swinging. All right. You will commit violence. Damn, this guy in his D4 armor. Oh, there's a hit. <laughs> Two damage blocked by four armor. Wow. Mm. You um, strike him in the arm with the fucking battle axe and it, like, does nothing. Yeah. Okay. All right, next. Guys, can Henry try to get down there? I don't see. Yeah, what's you can. On this you act. can. You can fit there now. Hold on. Okay, great. Probably want um, Spiker to go first, so he can try to move out of the way. Spiker's not doing too good. No dice, Henry. All right. With the mighty chaos blade. Well, I think this might be a good time to take a shot at using the time lock pneumotoxin the tablet of poisoning oh. and see if, if that helps <laughs> at all you roll that six baby i crush it to a coarse powder and uh wield it against him uh for a hit okay uh, and then it does d6 big, damage big money big prizes big money come on get us that six Oh, oh close. Still right. five damage. That's not bad. Well, he's got armor though. Um, I don't think armor affects the the poison toxin thing. Oh, okay. Uh, then please roll me a dr8 agility test. Wait, hold on. Let, let me see if it explicitly. Strain upon the creature takes d6 damage. On a six, it dies. Harmless to the wielder. Yeah, it makes sense. It's like a magic powder you know okay but that's fine <laughs> all right cool uh you say agility eight mm -hmm. okay got it oh, okay time. all right so you strike him it's now his turn uh as you cast your spell with your tablet he looks at you and goes you are not the only one with powers of the arcane and he's going to cast an ability as well uh-oh Nine violet signs unknot the storm. D2 bolts of lightning dealing D6 damage each. Okay, so D2 here. He summons two bolts of lightning. Uh, one is going to hit Henry for sure. And then the other one we will randomize between the other three heroes. The other three Cretans. Rilk. No. You are each taking D6 damage. Well, one. Okay. Uh, and then 
he will swing at Spiker. DR12 to defend yourself. Ah, uh, damn. Oof. All right. So he's not going to do damage here. What he does instead is he swings the flail. You're not expecting him to, to swing it the way he does. Instead of trying to strike you, he wraps it around your ankle and he pulls with all his might. It puts you off balance and he shoulder charges you like as hard as a fucking ox and it knocks you back over the ledge into the black sludge. With a splash, I need you to... Well, where's the rules for it? So when you hit this stuff, Spiker, it is thick, it is oily, and it is scorching hot. Mm. Please give me a DR8 toughness test. All right. You do not take any damage, but it feels like your skin is on fire. You also notice when this happens, the two skeletons playing their violins, they change their tune and they're playing something much more frantic and fast. And it is your guy's turn. And Fletcher's going to move back trying to create some space. Okay. Uh, Pell's right next to him, so he's going to swing. Okay. Actually, as a matter of fact, he'd probably move here so that only two of you can get to him without having to deal with the big cabinet of body parts next to him. <laughs> Dick move. He's not dumb. You don't get to be a cannibal warlock without having a oh. few sports. No, we're re-rolling that, I'm telling you. Another one. <laughs> Another fumble. My, this is going to be my last omen. It literally can't get worse than that, you know? Yeah, so, right. Uh, I mean, you know, there we go. And nothing. So that's cool. So <laughs> one damage, four armor, for nothing. Uh, yeah, my shit's like just clanging off him. Uh, where are you standing? Are you right in front of him? Right here? Yeah. Okay. All right, who's next? Um, uh, I guess I have decided to buy a rope, so I'm going to uh, scoot over and try to throw a line down to Spiker and try to haul him out of the goop. Okay, give me a DR10 agility test. Right, agility. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's not too hard. He didn't fall that far back. Okay. It's just that he's in it. So yeah, you get it like right by his hands. He can grab it. I grab it and haul myself oh. out. All right. Spiker and Henry give me a presence test, DR12. And then Spiker, I will need either a strength or agility test to pull yourself up and out of the sludge. Oh, come on. Okay. Five and agile. All right. Um, and Spiker, you pass your presence test. You see something moving in the sludge coming towards you. Oh, no. Uh, Henry, you can attempt to also give him a strength test uh, to pull him out. Yeah. Since all you did was throw your rope this turn. Uh... But you are too weak to do what? so. What's a, a? This is just a twelve, right? Yes. Can I use an omen to? Sure. Turn that into a success. Okay, yeah. I will do that. All right. You literally drag him up and over the edge, back onto the stone floor. You can see his clothes are literally smoking from this oily black sludge that is still on him. And. Thanks for the ball. Uh, Rilk, you're the last one to go this round. Yeah, I'm gonna try to hit the guy. Damn. He takes two damage. Oh, that chipping guy. away. Give me that DR8 I'm, toughness I'm, test, please. I'm going to use my omen to do max damage, so it does six damage instead of two. 
Nice. So six minus two is four. So it takes two more points of damage. No, D, well, D8 max is eight. So. Oh, I'm sorry, you were D8, D8. Okay, yeah. so it takes six more points of damage? Four more points total. Four, or six four. double, yeah. All right, uh, hold on, I can't do math. Even though we're in single digits, <laughs> I still can't do math. Okay, <laughs> okay. and then right. I need a presence test? Uh, toughness. toughness, right? Hold on, hold on. I'm looking at the wrong page here. I think it's toughness. Okay. No, this one's... G wait. Agility, DR8 agility. To dodge the falling chunks of human flesh that rain from the side of the sky. Ew, okay. The screaming, bloody chunks of human flesh. I pace. Ah, ha. Okay. Uh, Fletcher's turn. He's not too happy about this. He is going to strike Rilk. Hmm. Or not he good. will attempt to. Not good. Uh, his uh, damage is D6. D8. D8. Oh, 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 oh. Good one. Yeah, no, he hits me. For one damage. Okay, and when this thing strikes you, it burns like a cattle prod. All of your agility tests are at negative two until otherwise stated. So I'm just going to turn my agility into minus two because it's a zero normally. Nice. Not nice. Okay, um, and then you see a massive shape emerges from the sludge, a huge black intestine-shaped writhing worm-like creature <laughs> called, a uh... gut, called a gut worm. This thing is massive. Uh, Spiker, it's coming for you. DR12 to dodge or block the attack. It does D10 damage Oof. with its razor sharp teeth. It's multiple rows of razor sharp teeth. Oof. Oof. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Oof. Five, Five damage. damage. Ooh. It clamps down on you. We didn't want I'm to be still standing. Invisibility? Was that. This is round. It was like three or four. This is round four. Yeah. I'm okay. pretty sure the invisibility is gone at this point. Um, <laughs> Eric, I need you to make a DR6 agility test or you are devoured and instantly die. Ooh, we're we're on the two. Two. Okay. Oh. This thing bites down on you, but you manage to yank your leg out of its mouth, tearing flesh and clothes and armor, but you are still alive and not being swallowed. Uh, you guys are up. Um, after we attack, are we able to like disengage and walk away? Or... Yeah, there's no attacks of opportunity in this game unless oh. the situation warrants it. So. Okay. Um. Oh, there's two big issues. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to hit the worm with a big sword. Yeah, crit, bro. Dude, if you, if you one goes. shot the worm, oh my god, you would go down in Mark IV history. <laughs> what, what is this guy's armor? Uh, his armor is D6. He has a thick hide. Oh, yes. That's oh. brutal. Oh, 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 my, oh my god. Oh my god, man, 20! <laughs> oh my god. One on the armor for 13 damage. Oh, if only it was the max damage and you ended the world, that would have been even better. But that's still pretty cool. Uh, so you, most importantly, though, you wreck his armor down to a D4. Which oh is pretty my cool. Gosh. Yeah. Uh, as you smash into this thing, it roars in pain. I definitely need a calculator here. Um, that's a lot of numbers. <laughs> Spoilers, it has double digit health. Imagine that. Uh, 11? 13. 13. Okay. Wow, Henry. Incredible. Truly are blessed by the Beck lore. All right. I'm also going to. Scoot back slightly. I hope it <laughs> Fuck that shit. I guess I'm gonna attack it. All right. And try and prevent it from getting my leg again. 
Nope. All right. All right. Uh, did I go? You have I, don't think I, I don't think I went this turn. Okay. No, you have not. Right. 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 Like her back here. Maybe it doesn't want to come towards the fire. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's something. Yeah. I mean, even the alien in Alien Isolation didn't like fire, so. <laughs> oh no, no. my god. So, pal, you're like, all right, I fucking got it. You're about to strike him in the head, and he gets his axe up right at the last, or his flail right at the last second, and it just bounces off, and you do no damage. Damn it. It would have been the best hit ever, but it wasn't. Uh, Fletcher then turns around. He gives you a wicked grin, and he tries to bring the flail down on your head, pal. Shit. Oh, it is. This one song is jacked up on my player. I don't know what's going on here. And then, Spiker, you can make a defensive roll against the worm as well. I don't know. I'll survive another one of those. Uh, Fletcher does D8 damage, not D6. Oh, okay. I'll roll a dodge. All right, Spiker, this thing tries to bite you. You manage to roll out of the way, and it just eats concrete. Oh, and Fletcher does 7 minus 2, Ew. so uh, 5 damage oh. to hell. And then you are also at minus 2 uh, for agility tests as this thing burns. Oh, fuck. Okay. Your turn, kids. Okay. I uh, guess I'll go and continue trying to kill Fletcher. He takes two more damage. All right. He's slowing down. He's huffing and puffing, but he's still going. Give me that DR8 agility test. So Damn DR10 it. now. Chunks of flesh! No, you well, pass. Okay. Bueller? Anybody? Uh, Pell's gonna go fuck this, and he's going to uh, shift into raven mode. Okay. Cool. You are a bird. <laughs> I am now a bird. <laughs> Henry and Spiker? Uh, is this a big bird? Can I stand in the bird's space? It's, I think it's just the size of a raven, right? Like a raven? Yeah, raven? I'm just a raven. I'm just a little guy. Yeah, you yeah, can stand in the same space. I'm like gonna to... whack the worm again. Hard to kill. <laughs> that sounds dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Uh, One damage I... to the it's worm. Something. We're doing it, boys. Uh, he's actually down to a uh, D4 armor, remember? His armor got fucked up when Henry crit him. Oh. So roll uh... D4 instead of D6. He might do more than one damage. There you go. Two damage. Three damage, even. <laughs> Holy holly shit. Uh, okay. It hurt him, but it only get hurt him much. Henry, your turn. Right. Hitting Fletcher. Uh, and Henry the hero boy. pull it off. Uh-oh. Whoa. Oh. Big numbers. <laughs> All Big numbers. right. There it is. Once again, the Chaos Blade striking Fletcher through the chest, and he screams, dying and gurgling. Give me a DR8 agility test, please, Henry. Oh, All now, right, the one. flesh finally strikes somebody dealing and D4 10. damage. That's just D4 damage. What? All right. And then the big monster worm going for Spiker again. Oh, come on. Oh. Oh, no. oh. oh my god, you are so lucky. Uh, uh, 
However, you still have to take the test to avoid getting swallowed because it did hit you. Which is agility? Yep, DR6. Ooh. Okay. Oh my god, you're so lucky. You're so lucky that dice bounced. <laughs> All right, you guys are up. This thing is trying to devour Spiker. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to use my scroll of Daemon of Capillaries. Okay. So what, what, how do I use this scroll? Just presence test? Uh, ask Henry. Henry. Yeah, on powers, there's a button that says wield power, which is, it'll roll a presence test. Uh, and then throw your bad times points in if, if it doesn't work. Nice. Success. So every round, it loses D4 HP. Okay, roll me D4, please. Four. Nice. It is spasming as it begins to suffocate. <laughs> How many rounds does this last? Well, that's a good question. Let's see. Four D6 rounds. All right. Oh. Six. <laughs> oh, you lucky bastard. All right, nice. Yeah. Nice city. Damn. Uh, who's next? Anybody else still have to go? Uh, yeah, Pell will fly over. Oh, boy. Oh. Uh, and I will use my... My Whittle Raven Claws. Remember, it's D4 armor now, not D6. I want to print it again. It drops into D2. Oh, so close. Oh, almost. <laughs> Man, Kyle, I'm so sorry. Uh, ineffective scratches. Yeah. Is that everybody? Uh, Henry... Henry, because the, the worm attacks Spiker again, so it's just our round, so I think Henry needs to go again. It's gonna go hit the, hit the worm, I guess. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually try to open the door. It is locked. Can I quickly search the, oh, the man's pockets? Yes, you do find a key. A strange looking key. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. Make sure I'm reading this right. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's um, it's locked. Cool. All right, the monster is gonna go for Pell this turn because it dared scratch his beautiful skin. Um, so make your defensive roll, and yeah. <laughs> uh, you can roll the the damage again on his Sean for the drought or the suffocating or whatever. Nice. Only one. Every little bit helps, man. Yeah. Oh no! Uh, this thing does D10 damage. Uh, oh, then I'm then uh, he eats the he eats Pell. Pell is swallowed immediately, <laughs> without hesitation. All right. I mean, it makes sense. Small bird. <laughs> Damn. All right. Let me uh, put that on the list. <laughs> Yep. By Ow. the way, if if he died, uh, that would have been negative nine, I think. No, negative negative seven. Ooh. Oof. Yep. So he's All dead. Right. Well, uh, on the plus side, it's your guys' turn. Great. <laughs> All right, can I open this door? Yes, the, the okay. key works. Uh, you uh, find a room that, upon quick inspection, uh, looks... There's there's one torch in here kind of dimly lighting everything, and it looks like it's a room just filled with junk, trash, bones, and there's another door to the south over here. Also, I need you to roll a d4. A lot of D4s. A four. 
Give me a perception test of... Oh, I'm sorry, presence test of DR16, please. Nope. A seven. <laughs> you do not see the nesting death that reaches uh, out and strikes at you. Spider time, fucker. Yes. Uh, yep. Go ahead and give me that uh, DR12 defensive roll, please. Does D4 damage. Okay. You block as it strikes. And... Uh, who else needs to go? Spiker and Rilk? Yeah. Yep. Alright, you can see that uh, Henry is fighting something in the doorway, but, I mean, you can't really get into the door, so... You know, between him and Fletcher's giant dead body... Okay, yeah, but the worm's still there, right? Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's still coming at you. Uh, no. Alright. Rilk? I mean, if I get near it, I'm gonna start taking big dick damage because I'm at minus two agility now. Oh, that's only for the get swallowed test. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, no, uh, Fletcher hit me with like the branding thing that was giving me minus agility, right? Well, the, the agility test is only to avoid getting swallowed. the The attack from it is still a regular defensive roll. That is also agility. Oh, it is? I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize okay. that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, oh, the, I'm not yeah, looking you're, double, you're double, double fucked. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, I'm going to yeah, back so go up. go fight it. Go fight it. <laughs> Rilk, back up. Come on. You'll be fine. You're Rilk. Are you screaming at yourself? Yeah. Rilk, back up. <laughs> Rilk, back up. <laughs> He's having an argument in his own head. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, he's losing For more gameplay. <laughs> All right, Spiker, uh, you went this turn, right? Oh, yeah, because you did nothing. All right, so it yep. is the Critter's turn now. So, um, Henry, you need to defend again. Because that thing had a sneak attack on you. Uh, and then, Spiker, you're the only target right now, so it's just going to keep wailing on you. Damn it. Real bravely ran away and it already ate your <laughs> friend. Oh, but you uh, he's got a plus right. three to his dodge. I'd have a minus two. I would have rolled, you know, a ten and dead. I mean, it makes sense. It's yeah. Not wrong. Okay, you guys are. All right. I'm gonna hit the right. spider. What's the spider armor? Four, two, D two, two. Ooh, pretty good. It's a hit. Chaos Blade crushing it. Six, Six damage. damage. Nicely done. Yeah, I'm gonna attack the worm. The worm. Is, this, is there enough room for me to stab? Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, you can probably squeeze between that. All right, Rilk. Okay, then I'll I'll go over here and I'll try to kill the this thing. That is. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, nice. Nice. D for uh, damage. Roll the D4 armor instead of D2 shit. Oh, yeah. Reroll that. Um, one. Slash R. <laughs> one damage. Okay. And then um, D4 for the worm. Two. Alrighty. That was the third round. Yes. Taking damage. Yep. All right. Uh, so Rilker, defense 12 and D4 damage. And Spiker, once again, d10 damage. I pass. Nice done. So you can dodge. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll go fight the Oh, worm. no. Oh. Ouch. Two damage to Spiker. I mean, and I'm now still I standing. need the DR6 agility test or die. Oof. I made it. All right. We should probably both go fight more, do. realistically. Uh, I mean, I guess you guys I... are leaving me to die over here. Yeah, I was hoping okay. that we could just go into this room and then not deal with the worm for a little bit. Well, the, the, the fucking spider thinks that. <laughs> but um, uh, another d4 damage. Let's 
If I get a four boy, or another two, I mean, nine damage yeah. so far, it's not bad. Alright. Um, and then he has D4 armor because it's been sundered. Wah. Nope. Wah. Wah. God, I guess, uh, are we doubling down on Worm? <laughs> I mean, Spiker's gonna die if we don't. Alright, fine. Well, this is a D4 armor on this guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh! Oh! Ten, Be ten damage. Easy. Damn! Damn. <laughs> so good. Okay, uh, the spider is going to attack Henry. And the worm. Roll d3 here as well. Spiker again. Oh my. Of course. Got a rivalry going now. I guess. You dare stand against the power of the worm. Oh, that's it, folks. Nope. Dead. Seven damage. Dead. Spiker is swallowed up as the worm engulfs him, chewing him to death. It is a mercifully quick death. Is it, though? You're like not. <laughs> okay. Uh, next, uh, roll the d4 for the damage. Turn five for the gut worm. Another two. All right. Oh yeah. Also, uh, this what is d4 for the zero damage. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going backwards. I dodged the spider earlier. Okay. And you uh, can go now, Henry. This is stupid. Grill <laughs> back up. This is more Bjork. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I'm going to hit the spider. All right. That is a hit. That <laughs> is... What? <laughs> it's still no, alive. it is. That's a, a D4 well, armor. It still dies. Like, it doesn't matter. D2? It's D2 20. armor. It's D2 right, armor. Yeah. All right. So three damage. Three damage? It's still alive. Damn it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to move around, though, into this room now that it's vacated, <laughs> if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, my God. Standing at the door. Not at the door. All okay. right. Rilk? Yep. You've been left to die. I see. Rilk, <laughs> I don't people to get in the room. Did you take your turn yet? Yeah, I took my turn. Oh, you did. You did. Okay. Well, the, the worm's obviously attacking you. So yeah. let's... Let's get that right. out of the here's, way. Here's the worm. Uh, you said D10 damage? Oh, yeah. Three. You'll be fine. Oh, no, we're easy. Easy mode here. Easy mode. Okay, and the spider will randomize who it attacks. Rilk. <laughs> and that's D6 damage? D D4. D4, okay. Chip damage, baby. All right, you are fine. Okay. You're got your turn now. Last turn of damage on the gut worm from your spell. Well, give me that big fat four. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I need to do math though. Not nice. Worm is looking hurt. Cool, 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 cool. Um, so I'll, I'll throw a battle axe into it as I run into the fucking room with Henry. Okay. Finally, is it enough? Oh, oh, it, it should not be in D4, but... Uh, you're hitting the worm, right? No. You're hitting the spider? Yeah. Oh, spider's dead. Okay. It only had two health left. Nah. Okay. I'm in here now. You hit it, and it instantly flips over on its back, and its legs curl up, and it dies. Oh, gross. <laughs> but it makes bone noises while it does it. <laughs> snap, 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 snap. Gross. All right. <laughs> Um, the worm drags itself ah, shit balls. crushing and attacking everything in its path. Uh, it's going to try to attack you, Rilk, but it, because of the door is smaller than it, I will give you, uh, this will be DR 10 to defend instead of 12. Nice. 
but it's still like you know gelatinously forcing its way through the opening it, it is going to get through okay uh, but it, it's getting slowed down so i am fine what would you like to do uh i i'll attack it and then move out of the way for henry to attack it all right it takes three damage okay well done henry all right i'm gonna come up and and strike oh oh is it enough for four damage it is still standing oh my god (laughs) oh with probably its last breath it'll try to strike you henry dr10 so it's trying to smash through the wall Oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Your All right. turn. More violence. Uh, hit him with the knife. The knife? The you chaos knife. The chaos blade of destruction. <laughs> right. Is another uh, hit the post at twelve. Uh, for six damage. Or a minus three from his armor. only had two health remaining. You have slain the gut worm. Splat. Hoorah. The beast is dead. Well done. That motherfucker had 50 hit points. Yeah, damn. That was nuts. I did not think you were going to fight. Holy shit. I don't know why you guys just should run away. (laughs) I was pitching that the whole time. Like, there was... There was the stepladder the whole time. You could have just left. Yeah, but like, one at a time. That way. (laughs) Come in this... This and go through the interesting doors that are full of spiders every time. All right. Another well, fun twist. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What uh, what would you like to do next? We got a few minutes here before we finish up. So, um, try to find the child. I guess we'll search through the rubble and various corpses. body. You you already searched Fletcher's body, right? Well, I mainly was looking for a key to open the door, but if there's anything else there, well, like a fancy flail, you could. Yeah, there's his it. flail, and then uh, go ahead and roll me. I believe it's a D66. What you got? 56. Two weighted dice. Fuck me. Okay. Guess I'll cheat at dice with those and get killed in a bar fight. Good. Uh, Is this flail anything special? It's just a flail? It is a flail that does D8 damage. It is called the Red Hot Flail. And then if you hit somebody, they're at minus two agility for a day. Sick. How about I look at, I can edit flails. Or you just put Fletcher's flail, fl- you know, flaming flail, whatever you want to call it. Sure, sure. Yeah, Fletcher was pretty broly too. He had 20, 20 hit points, and then every three rounds he would randomly cast a spell that he automatically succeeded on. <laughs> and then if he did if he did damage to him, he had the the chunks of flesh would rain from the sky and possibly damage you. I don't know why that happens, but it does. <laughs> That's what I was about to ask. I was yeah. like, is there more details on that? Is <laughs> yeah, he's Fletcher the Cannibal Warlock. That's <laughs> those are details. Well, Welcome to New York, Warlock. Warlock. Yeah. He does well, actually get like a, a uh, he has a, a little paragraph of fluff here. As a child, Fletcher was led out into Sarkash and left to die. Desperate necromancers found the feral boy chewing on rabbit carcasses in a gloomy glade. They took him in, but no force or threat could control him, and he slowly grew more powerful. Eventually, they too abandoned him to die, hurling him into the accursed den. This became his domain, ruled purely by his will. Um, can we open this door? Yeah, the key unlocks that door too. Are you like particularly damaged before we open that? Uh, six out of ten. Yeah, I'll I'll give you a heal nice. before we open that door, just in case. With this amazing medical kit <laughs> for whole one. Oh, five hit points. Sheesh. And also stops bleeding. How often can you use the medical kit? 
Is it it's, indefinite, or does it run out? It runs out. It had presence plus four uses when I picked it up, so it was like eight total. <laughs> then went down to six. Gotcha. Okay. I can't open the door, Chris. Oh, sorry. There you go. Oh. <laughs> okay. It. All right. So you open this room, uh, and you see that there is indeed a massive statue. Uh, it looks like um, an older man kind of looks uh, decrepit. He's wearing long robes and he's like sitting. It looks like he's sitting on something, but it's kind of covered by his robe. And then there's a crown on his head indicating he is a king of some sort. And there's a, a little thing. There's like a little uh, on the, the base of the statue. There's a little nameplate that says King Leonard the Second, uh, and you realize he is a one-eyed king, and there's a uh, obvious orbital cavity where there would be a second eye, but it's empty, and he is holding in his lap a horned skull that's about twice the size of a human skull. Okay. Wild. And then you can see the, the, the wall behind the statue is destroyed. You can see the area uh, with the, the sludge. Uh, the skeletons at this point have, uh, they've turned from that frantic pace once the worm showed up to a very slow, melancholy kind of funeral dirge of sound. Kind of like the Undertaker's theme song but very <laughs> slow on violins. Uh, and then there's the door that leads to the room with the chains to your south. And you can see there is a handle on the door on this side. Okay. But we're still looking for the kid. Yeah, I think we want to go back to nine and try to crawl under and see where's... Oh, yeah, there was that as well. Or we go into the room, yeah, like you were saying over here. No, I I like your idea better, actually, if there's something on that side. Unless the kid is, like, a, actually a dog or something. <laughs> I swear to God, this woman went and made us go... It's not cannibalism if they're just eating a dog, so, I mean... Yeah, let's, let's, you, uh, uh, are you doing anything in here or just going through the door? Um, I don't know. Rilk, do you want any of this stuff? I... Don't is think. that I mean is that like a real crown on his head? Um a carved crown. No, it's it's carved. It's part of the statue. Can I look back into my memories and see if the old man at the front had one eye or not? Sure. Give me a presence. PR10. Almost. <laughs> you couldn't tell you weren't paying that close attention. His head was kind of down. Maybe it was covered up by his hood. Or maybe his eyes were closed. You're not sure. Mm. Yeah, last time I touched something, a bunch of skeletons popped out and tried to kill me, so I'm good. We may want to... <laughs> not take anything else with us. <laughs> yeah, nothing but the kid. Chris, can you unlock the door again? Party on the three. Um, all right, give me a second here. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's that. Okay, well, um, you guys get to where that tunnel is, okay? And there's a small tunnel. You have to get down on your hands and knees to crawl through it. And it's a narrow fit. Uh, I'll put you over here so you can start crawling through it and then Rilke I'll put you there too so it's it's uh it's a regular tunnel it like it doesn't look it's been like carved it's a natural natural forming tunnel here uh and when you get to the end you find that there is uh the strangest thing you find a greenhouse with real plant life again more of these oil lamps hanging from the ceilings uh but everything here is 
bright green, flourishing life, palm trees, cacti, and flowers. And beyond the glass that makes up the ceiling and part of the like the upper parts of the walls, you can see the moonlight of the sky beyond. In the middle of the greenhouse, uh, sitting on the floor, you find a woman who is barefoot. She has just very simple, dirty robes wrapped around her, very long, unkempt hair, and some strange uh, symbols painted on her face. Looks kind of like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and there is a small camp that she has set up here. Actually, I think this is supposed to be a campfire right here, so she's probably sitting right there. Uh, and you see that she has three companions that are sitting around the campfire next to her. They <laughs> all look like they are... It's weird art, but they don't quite look like that. But they are... Um, they all look very uh, youthful individuals, probably in their like teens or like late teens, early twenties. Um, and when she sees you guys enter, she says, "Oh, we have guests." She says, "Please come and join us. We're just about to have a meal." And uh, it's kind of hot and stuffy in here, probably because of the the plants you imagine, but. Um, it's quite unlike anything you two have ever seen, and it has a very pleasant, sweet aroma, both a combination of the beautiful plant life and whatever they are cooking in their little stew pot on the campfire. And she pats the grass down next to her with her hand, indicating for you to come sit, and that is where we will end tonight's session. What the fuck? Like, I'll just share this art for you guys. Like I said, I, I just found random shit from Merkmore. Uh, <laughs> oh. Yeah. Ew. Yeah, they don't look anything like that, but that was okay. I, just, I liked it. It was too cool not to use. Yeah. That's yeah, where they give they give you crappy art like for all the um like all the other characters in this, but they don't give you art for the, the gut worm or her little bros here. So I just had to find random shit, so there you go. Nice, nice. So there we have it, listeners. Another two guards dead. We are up to, or down to, 40 of 50 remaining. And it looks like we've already got new characters for next time, so that'll be great. And we will see what happens as Rilke and Henry will finish off the dungeon next week. So thank you all for stopping by, and we will see you next time. Same time, same place, Lady Night. Night.